Stanley for about two yards on the play, so it'll bring up a third down situation, third in a long two, we'll call it. Is that how those offensive linemen try to tell you who's boss up there? I guess. I guess. Well, uh, of course, we want a first down here, but we got to have a first down here. Yeah. This is, uh, as you said, when you get this this close in this top field position, you've got to get something out of it. Oh, yes, especially after a turnover. Okay, Bryant. He's ready. He has a single setback behind him. has three wide outs, and he throws it out, and ball's knocked down uh, by one of the the charging linemen, I believe. The pass was intended for Brown out on the right, out in the flat. Jake, we should be in four down territory, so I do not expect to see Jellico punting down here. Uh, I think you're going to see another offensive play. Oh, definitely. Yes, sir. He has. Uh, Jellico needs this first damn bat. Looking at one of the little future cheerleaders there, or maybe a cheerleader at present. She's got a little <laughs> little shirt on, three little gal. Ooh. This one's thrown out, and it's complete. No, caught and then dropped. I think it's it was knocked loose, Jake. Yeah, probably was. Uh, Johnny Barrett, he was hit hard. He had the ball in his hand, but did not have a complete control of the ball, and it was knocked away incomplete. So well, the Eagles you, of hell. When you're stretched out like that to catch a pass, you're you're really unprotected, and he, he took a good hard lick right in the small of the back. He certainly did. Johnny Baird, a tough little kid, though, just a sophomore, got two more years. Ahead. He's a good athlete, Don. He plays basketball and uh, baseball, all the sports. Well, we need to score that time. Uh, we, we haven't talked much about momentum, but it could swing here, Jake. Uh, quarterback keeper, he's looking for somebody. And he, I'm not sure, he throws it, and I believe it was out of bounds when he throw, threw the ball, but he threw it and completed a pass to number 82, well, Jason uh, Butterini, but the whistle sounded back uh, about the line of scrimmage. We're going to call that the 28-yard line. I don't know if they were calling him in the grass, uh, which is not a high school rule. Well, I believe it was out of bounds, Don. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah out of bounds. It, it's hard to see. <laughs> yeah, they, there is a section there, uh, a telephone post, about a three-foot-wide section of, of building, so Don's having a little bit of trouble <laughs> seeing through that. Now, Don, we, we, know, well. we know something's going on out there. It's just kind of <laughs> hard to see what it is. You don't to see that well. Okay, second and nine, yeah. and back to pass is Smith. That's right. Yes, sir. Oh, good. First of all, it was thrown in a position where the receiver was not. Okay, was, inadvertent flag apparently. They picked him up. Well, they should have picked him no, up. No, no, they're going to hear a goal penalty. There was no reason at all for that call. I want you folks to know that uh, the two officials that muffed that call uh, was Bob yes, Brangle and Charlie King. And I think Charlie was the first one to blow that one. Well, the little guy on the far side was the one that, uh, the first one that blew it, so uh, well, that, he that really was blew it, that too. Was that was terrible. Of course, uh, King didn't have things in him, but... That's uh, terrible. Okay, we're ready to go. First and ten for the Eagles, and hit across along the line once, twice, and finally, uh, as coming up to meet him head-on was Sam Bryant. Jake, now the people saw that pass interference as well as we did. The Oakdale boy came across Brown's back. There was no way that Brown interfered on that play. Well, the contact was made, Don. There's no question about it's contact being made. Oakdale. Well, the, he, anyway, the, but the, the contact was not made until the ball had gotten, had already made contact with the, the with the offensive player too. So uh, he's and, wide open. And on a potential interception, the the offensive player becomes a defensive player. That's a loss on the play of about three yards. Good defense on, along the front line there. Sean Ferris and Big Billy Perkins along with Matt Stanley in on that play, throws him for a sizable loss, three yards anyway, back to the 49-yard line. So it'll be third and four for the Eagles. I wish we had replay capability. I'd like to look at a couple of these things again. Well, I don't think Coach Owens even wanted to see them the first time. Well, we'll watch it. we can watch it Saturday night, Don, that's for sure. Okay, and this time, uh, fake off the left on? side and hit along the line. And, oh boy, I'll tell you, we, we had him, Don. But his forward momentum brings him to first down across the 45-yard line, just inside the 45, the Jellico 45. He just kept twisting and turning and picking up yardage. I thought we had him back there, but he got away. So another first down for the Eagles, and Jellico really kind of letting the field position slide over into the hands of the Eagles. Uh, but Jellico has played some good defense, and they're going to be called on again right now to do we that. We need to play some more good.
good defense. Okay, Stanley Smith, he's the quarterback. Brings him up. And uh, he's in a oh, good ball. Here we go. Yes, sir. Get him up the way he throws it. Get him now. Major yes, sir. Ball. Beautiful, Major beautiful, ball. beautiful Sammy Marlowe right on his track. Jake, that's about a 25-yard uh, loss. Well, this is, this is one of the things the shotgun will do for you, Don. If you, You've got to have good uh, communications from center to quarterback, and it was not a good snap. And you have to have a good center. You certainly do. Uh, there's no excuse for that. When the ball normally on a wet night, it's slick and it gets heavy, uh, which makes for bad snaps. But this is a clear, beautiful night. The field is in excellent condition, Jake, considering the conditions we've played under in the past. So okay, second down in about a mile. So uh, the uh, quarterback, Smith, back there with his hands up and under the quarterback this time. And, and back to pass. Pressure. And there's a little screen pass. And almost coming up with it was Paul Morgan, one of the interior uh, defensive linemen. And he came across the center playing his position well that time. Jake, that pass was intended for number 22, Doug Miller, and apparently there was a mix-up in signal because he had not turned around, and the ball hit him in the back of the head. Well, Paul Morgan was the only man, really, that was uh, capable of catching the pass. Really, it was a screen pass into the middle, and nobody uh, seemed to know what was going <laughs> I on. I think it was it right into the middle of Miller's back. Right. 4.15 remains in the first period, and no score as Jellico uh, has really Oakdale backed up nicely right now they need to hold it out of the shotgun again another high snap and a quick, quick kick attempt to hey, quick kick and block, block. Yes, sir, so Jellico has the ball in beautiful field position at the 28 for uh, I'm not sure if it was blocked by Perkins or not but he come up with the ball so Did you, I think he was about to get tackled. He said, I'm going to get rid of this thing. <laughs> Maybe they want all well, that, uh, that, that pile on. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but anyway, Jellico has the ball now. We have just over four minutes left to play here in the first quarter. Jake, I'm even reluctant to get optimistic when it's fourth and 30-some because uh, if you'll remember over at Whitley City, they had fourth and 30, a uh, third and 32 and uh, picked up a first yeah, down. They sure did. That's right. And okay, Brian, back to pass. And, and he throws one long and uh, well overthrown. Baird and he, Bryant really got a reception back now, Jake, there. I, that was uncalled for. Uh, 42 had him tackled. There was, no, there was no question about it. And then uh, I don't find 44 on my sheet, but he came in and just gave him a shove. Well, there's no 44 on our even on our roster here tonight. But so we'll have to guess who that is. <laughs> Maybe he wants to put on a mask and uh, ride That's a white right, horse. I don't know. Bandit. Right. Well, anyway, brings up a second down situation, second and ten. As Bryant hands under and should have encroachment. We should have encroachment on that one. If, yeah. Oak, if Oakdale wasn't offside, there never has been a team outside. Well, we'll wait to see. Uh, these officials have not been right so far yet tonight. Let's see if they're going to be right once. They're against Jellico. Offside <laughs> against Jellico. <laughs> okay, Don. Jake, I done. saw three red shirts in Jellico's <laughs> backfield prior to the snap. Well, apparently one of the Jellico players must have breathed or something along the line, Don, and they're looking well, for Well, I can like understand it. illegal procedure, but not offside. Okay, Arthur Smith comes out of the game for the Blue Devils and replaced in there by Mark Johnson at the guard position. Of course, now we haven't accused Charlie King and Bob uh, Brindle of being uh, rocket scientists tonight either. No, no, they haven't gotten any awards. Now, see, here we come again. Uh, right, now this time back in the little quick pitch over the center uh, intended there for Stanley. Nice play, but just through the hands of Stanley. Jake, I don't know if that pass was intended for Stanley or Sammy Marlowe because yeah. Marlowe was just about eight yards down the field yeah. and doing a little curl. But better. I believe what he was doing, Don, he was clearing the area for Stanley because Stanley broke uh, free wide, wide open. And so was Marlowe. Well, he had a defensive man running with him where yeah, Stanley he, did not. All well, right, he, we're he ready to go. Been, he may have been the decoy. But, uh, we, and back to pass now is Brian and... This time, wide open is number seven, Marlowe, and just through the hands, just slightly overthrown. Marlowe let up a little bit on that one, Jake. Uh, looked like Brian had led him just about perfectly, and he hesitated just about a step or two. Okay, fourth down now as the ball is spotted on the 32-yard line. The Jellico, or the Oakdale 32, so Jellico it, two times, Don, have been here in with perfect field position and have fallen... Uh, Falling short, but they still have uh, have time here. Have one. Uh, well, it's 
fourth down, in other words. And uh, we have three minutes and 34 seconds, and this play, it's we need to one. convert it's here. It's a big one. It's a big one. He, no. just, he just threw it away. Yeah, Bryant had a lot of pressure coming on him and, and just really got rid of the ball. Uh, you got to stand in there a little bit uh, in situations like that. If you're going to play quarterback, you got to look them right in the beat of the eye, Jake. And, it's, it's, it's rough. There's no great oh, about I that four you. big uh, lineman breathing down your throat. Uh, Johnny Unitas was probably about the best I've ever seen at that. He would look you right in the eye and wait till the last second to turn loose the ball, knowing that he was going to just get killed. Okay, the ball has gone over to, to Oakdale now. The Eagles ready to go, and Smith uh, fakes one, one man and gives to the second man through it. Doug Miller picks up short yardage, backed up maybe to just to the line of scrimmage. I don't even know if he made it back to the line of scrimmage or not. Jay, another uh, flag. We had a, I think we probably had a loss of about Oh, one. yeah. We got sportsmanlike yes, conduct sir. on Oakdale. That'll mark them back 15, I believe, Don. Take them back close to the uh, 16, 17 yard That's line. That's right. Inside the 20 for sure. Depends on whether he takes little steps or big steps. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be about the 16. and We're going to call it that anyway. So it's uh, going to be first, still first down. And a nope. long way. About 25, 26 yards. And timeout call for and given to Oakdale. Don, we need to talk a little bit about our sponsors. Buddy. Yes, uh, Jake, uh, we'd like to welcome the Jellicoe and Electric, Jellicoe Electric and Water System uh, to our list of sponsors. These folks provide service to you all year long. Uh, when the weather is bad, uh, uh, whether it be rain, sleet, or snow, they keep your service going. They're out at all hours of the night to uh, keep Jellicoe comfortable. Uh, Tri-County Transmission in Williamsburg for all of your automotive needs. If you have any type of transmission problems, uh, go down and see the folks at Tri-County and tell them you saw it here on uh, the Blue Devil Sports telecast on Channel 3. Danny Somerset Oil over here on 5th Street. Uh, Danny offers a wrecker and a variety of services. Stop by and see old Cracker and uh, That's right. tell him we sent you. Jim concrete needs they provide uh, ready mix concrete and a, uh, and a just a whole host of uh, uh, construction and uh, concrete products uh, we'll pick up with this list uh, momentarily okay Stanley Smith the quarterback he's ready and hands under and gives to the second man through uh, another short yardage uh, pick up there Don the Blue Devils the, really the Blue Devils play some good D right now uh, picked up about two yards on the play. Uh, Looks like it brings up about third, and uh, we're going to call it about 22. 22. I, I, that should be about right. So, Jellico really getting rather stingy on their in defense. By golly, they're, they got them marched back here uh, and deep we, and need to hold them here. Yeah, we had bridges. We have bridges going into the ball game, uh, Jake, in, uh, in the place of uh, Leon Dean. And again, stopped at the line. I'll tell you what, Jellico, I see big uh, big Billy Perkins coming out of the bottom of that stack. As Bridges comes back out now, let's see. Jake, we're going to have to toughen up here when we get this ball back. Our passing game has not been going too good tonight, and we need to establish some semblance of either a running or passing game. Bryant's only one for 10 for five yards so far in the game, and we need to change that a little I bit. I believe we can do it. I believe we will do it. Jellicoe's a better passing team than that. Okay, back to deep to receive is Baird, a high snap from center, but he Almost gets away. Blocked. It's coming and down about the... Uh, mm. Get it, Johnny, and go. Johnny gets it, and he goes around the right side. Got some open territory down there. Needs a block. Does not get it. But he takes the ball down inside the 30-yard line. Don, a daughter, good run oh, back. Oh, an excellent run, Jake. He's right a, about the 30. Johnny showed a, showed good speed there, Don. He he kind of fumbled the ball as it hits the ground and picked that thing up, and he really knew what to do with it. He went downfield instead of running laterally, and he did a good job. Well, he was waiting to see what happened to the ball, Jake. It uh, hit about the 50, and... Uh, it took a hard Oakdale bounce, and that's when uh, Bear decided to pick it up and run. And, son, he just hit it upfield. He really did. Okay, uh, it'll be. Only had two to beat for the touchdown. That's right. Had one block over there. We could have been in business. But uh, Jellico is back in business. First and ten. The ball's on the 40-yard line, and we're ready to go. As Bryant brings him up, has a spread backfield that time, and hit in the backfield. Who didn't have a prayer? Jake, we're not going to be able to.
for the run that uh, play against Oakdale. I think they're going to see the flats open uh, out here tonight. Bryant, no uh, Bryant needs to uh, be swinging his backs out into uh, uh, either the left or the right flats. He's going to have to do a little bit of something to take It was Jerry Cummings that time, Don, and uh, he didn't have a prayer, didn't have a not one as he was hit in the backfield. They're coming straight up the middle on us, Jake. And here we go. And this time a fake up the middle and throws a little flat pass out and ooh! Hit there as, as Sammy Marlowe had his hands on the ball, but good defense. Well, now, knocked the ball away. That was the idea, except I mean to get the ball to him a little quicker. He's going to have to zip that pass out there in the flats, not throw a floater. You throw a floater out in the, in the flats like that, you're going to get your receivers killed. Third down as uh, Jellico unable to complete the pass. And uh, it's third and actually about uh, 14 for the Blue Devils. And what I'm talking about is a little moving pocket. Now, Brian is not real fast, but he needs to zip that ball into his bag. Uh, single setback, and that's Trigger back to block. And this time uncorked one, oh. and it's going to be touchdown, oh. Johnny Baird. Beautiful pass from Bryant into the out hands of Johnny Baird and just like he had glue on it, John. Oh, he caught it beautiful. Hit him all the way. That uh, is about a 37 yarder, Jake. Oh, beautiful execution that time as Johnny Baird really showed good speed that time as as Bryant threw the ball high, letting him run under it, and that's exactly what he did. Yes, now that makes him two of 13 for about 47. I'm sorry, 42 yards. Okay, we're ready to go as the Jellico lined up to, to uh, attempt the two-point conversion. The flea flicker? No, it's a little pass. Yes, yes, it's a uh, pass is completed to Marlowe for the two points. Uh, I don't know, it's a little razzle-dazzle play, but anyway, Bryant wound up with the ball. Well, right? I think the halfback cut the snap and, and pitched it back to, to Bryant. Right. Uh, I believe that's called a flea flicker, Jay. Okay, anyway, it worked. It, it worked. Better to hit Marlowe. Jellico takes the lead 8-0, and while we're waiting for the uh, kickoff from Jellico, let's tell you a little more about our sponsors. Uh, one of our sponsors tonight is the Family Drug Store on North Main Street in Jellico. Go by and see Little Dick Creek more for all of your pharmaceutical needs. Uh, Cloverleaf Exxon and Muffler Shop. Stop by and see Granville and all the crew. Uh, he has a a vending machine out there oh, that yes. will make any kind of uh, tailpipe that your car may want uh, and along with an excellent stock of muffler for uh, late imported automobiles. For any kind of automobile. It don't make any difference. Just take it out there. Granville and them boys, they'll fix that dude up. Baby. They'll take it apart, put oh, it yeah. back together yes, and yeah. have it better when, it, than you, when you started. Low That's kick, right. low driving kick, picked up about the 20. Uh, he's following his blockers, picking his way up the field. Hmm. Jakey gets back to about the 38-yard line. And unfortunately, that's our old nemesis. Uh, the, pass, the ball is brought back up to just Doug Miller inside the 40. We're going to call it this series will start from the 39-yard line. The Oakdale 39. It'll be first and 10 there for uh, Oakdale. Miller did a good job of just uh, following his blockers. As the quarterback now stands back in the shotgun formation. And, uh, Let's have another high snap, Jake. This time, a little uh, inside hand yeah, off. Yeah, nothing. Maybe two. No more. As Stanley comes up quickly along with Sammy Marlowe and uh, played their positions well this time. Didn't go for the fake and gained about a well, a short yard on the play. Second and nine, we're going to call it. The Miller. ball's just across the 40-yard line. Well, they didn't get much that time. As we'll start, to, we'll attempt to give you the uh, defensive unit in there for Jellico. I see Craiger, uh, Bridges, no, Craiger and Tracy Creekmore uh, in there now at linebacking, uh, at the linebacking Jake, position, along with Matt Stanley. That's the end of the first quarter, and while they switch into the field, we'll tell you that the score is Jellico 8. The Oakdale Eagles uh, zero. 
And while we have a minute, if you don't mind, I'll finish the thoughts of this. Good. Uh, go by and see all the folks at the Union Bank uh, and tell them that we sent you. The Union Bank is located on North Main Street. Uh, go by and see Pat, Skies, uh, JL, and all the friendly folks at uh, Union Bank. Uh, your friendly, uh, locally owned and managed hometown bank. Billy's Restaurant, home of the famous Billy Burger. They have uh, not only Billy Burger, but Billy Burgers, but a full menu. some of the best home-cooked pie you ever put a fork into. W W.H. wants to remind all the folks that he does take the uh, uh, heating vouchers, uh, whatever those are called, Jake, the low-income uh, mm -hmm. uh, vouchers. You can redeem those for uh, or with W.H. for your heating needs or your energy needs. Call W.H. Uh, tell him that we sent you. Okay, Smith gets the ball from the shotgun, and over the middle, it could be, and it is, and no, just finally dropped there by Stanley, oh, he as he had, had the ball one. in his hand, yes sir, and I believe he wanted to run a little bit too quickly, Doc. Oh, he wanted to tuck it in, he just couldn't get the handle on it, Jake. Uh-oh. Jellico roughing the passer. Oh no. Unfortunately, you're going to see roughing up where the flag is. It has to be roughing the passer, Jake. Well, that's the indication he hit the preliminary signal that he gave, but I wasn't watching that. I was watching the uh, the tip ball on and uh, all this stuff. Well, well, I'll tell you what, I don't know who really what brings this on because a minute ago, you know, they really soured on Bryant. Well, one of them tackled him and the other one just walked up and pushed him down. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what really brings this on. But anyway, Jellico just got the 15 yarder tag. Now that was man. called all the way by Jack Ham uh, Hamlet. He, he is responsible for all of that one. Okay, we're ready to go now. The quarterback with his hands up under the center and. Gives to one of the running backs, Drew. I'm not sure which one. Picks up good yardage, though. One of the better runs uh, on the night for Oakdale. As they tried la the right side of Jellicoe's defensive line and picked up some good yardage. Picked up about eight on the play. Jake, I need to talk to John Lee. So we've, our lighting system has gone through a number of years of weathering since it was installed. And some of our lights are windblown. And we have some dark spots out there. It's hard to pick up some of these numbers. Okay. Okay, quarterback. Yeah. He's clear. He's on it. Uh, and down, you, Don, listen, did you oh, see the way Johnny Baird played Johnny that played ball? that option well, Jake. Oh, uh, listen, he came up in...
ball back, fought him off, and made a clean tackle. Oh, yes, beautiful play. Johnny Baird, only a sophomore, but he's playing some ball, I'll tell you. Jake, oh. he looks like about 125 pounds of dynamite. <laughs> he's, not, he's, not a, he's not a big, heavy boy, that's for sure. Okay, say it's third down now, and third and four, we're going to call it. The ball's on just inside the 40-yard line, and Smith, keeper, and pitches it back. Oh, he's wide open back there. Let's get, that's all. That's it. That's yes, the sir. And Jellico really disrupting this offensive uh, team that's on the field right now for uh, Coach oh, yes. Eldon. In high school ball, Jake, as soon as that knee touches the ground, it does not have to be the result okay. of contact. All right. It plays over. Okay, into the break. game for the Blue Devils. <laughs> Gary Cummins replaces Bridges as Jellico apparently will be receiving the uh, punt. Yes, sir. Back deep for Jellico will be Johnny Baird, number five. Jake, I can't see who the punter is from here. No, those, those red and oh no. Jellico a little bit over eager there. Well, it's only going to cost more. them five, but yeah. that won't be an automatic first down. It's still going to bring up about fourth and ten. Oh, yeah, this will just get the ball back to about the original line of scrimmage, really, inside the 40-yard line, so uh, it'll be, it's still fourth and ten as the ball will be punted uh, from now somewhere we, around the 48-yard line. We, don't need, we don't need to keep doing that. Uh, I don't think we do. Okay, back in punt formation again is Oakdale. Jellico and still. And Baird is deep to receive. Back in single safety. That's a shank. Get away. Well, by golly, I'll tell you, that ball has bounced. Oakdale okay, the ball's has got flown. to bounce all night long. The ball's flown dead on the 10-yard line, and uh, Jellico will have the ball deep in its own territory. Jake, we have about two more sponsors we'd like to mention on this change of possession. Go buy American Home Furnishings at the corner of 5th and Main Street and tell John Leach and old S. Baird uh, that we sent you for all of your furniture and appliance needs. Those folks have a wide selection of furniture and appliances. They can just give you about anything you need for your home. And the 10-minute lube at Williamsburg for all of your automotive lubrication needs. Go by and tell them that we sent you. Matt Stanley in motion for the Blue Devils this time, and here comes uh, Bridges with the ball, a head of steam built up, and he picked up a three, four yards, maybe. Uh, looked like it was going to get more than that as Jellico had a blocker out in front, but the blocking broke down pretty, pretty rapidly. But Bridges is, uh, he's a transfer in here, as we said, and just now really getting, uh, getting the grasp on the Jellico system. Uh, you, of Jellico, Tennessee is your financial friend and partner in this neighborhood. Nobody will treat you with any more respect and dignity that you deserve than Union Bank. When you enter the lobby of Union Bank, you can sense the down-home atmosphere that only a hometown-owned and operated bank can portray. That's because Union Bank knows that it's been the hard-working, honest people of this rural mountain community that has made Union Bank the most popular bank in this area. And because of that, Union Bank has never been afraid to stand with you and commit themselves to you and help make your dreams come true. Whether it's buying a new home or purchasing an automobile or planning for that college degree, come to Union Bank and experience for yourself the friendly atmosphere of a locally owned and operated bank. So if you're looking for a secure, long-term relationship with a bank that's not just a one-way street, Come to Union Bank and see if things aren't different there. Union Bank wants to treat you with the same dignity and respect that they expect and they know you deserve. Union Bank of Jellico, Tennessee, your hometown bank. Jim and Son Towing and Danny Somerset Oil on La Follette Pike in Jellico, Tennessee offer complete auto maintenance and damage-free towing far and near. What would you do if your automobile broke down in the middle of nowhere and in the middle of the night? It's a possibility and it can happen to you. Well, here's the answer. Just write down these telephone numbers and carry them with you wherever you go. 
784-9557 and 784-9867. Someone is there in case of an emergency and they'll come to your rescue. Danny Somerset Oil is open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. until 12 o'clock midnight. They offer full service at the pumps. You do not have to wait because Danny's attendants promise to get in your car in a hurry. Also, Danny Somerset Oil has kerosene available. Mechanics are on duty all the time, and they can fix your automobile. It's that simple. Danny's Somerset Oil is now buying junk cars, used transmissions, radiators, motor blocks, heads, etc. Call them for more details. Danny Somerset Oil on La Follette Pike. Joe's Roofing and Guttering of Williamsburg, Kentucky has over 14 years of experience in the business, and they know what they're doing. They offer aluminum seamless guttering with nine different colors to choose from. Seamless, all custom work. No miter boxes. They make all their own corners, which eliminate many junctions, which can eventually create leaks. Joe's Roofing and Guttering use only 100% pure silicone at the junctions and ends. They use hideaway hangers, and they can install gutters on 30 and 45 degree angles, and can even install gutters in a complete circle. Commercial, residential, and industrial. Free estimates, no job too small. All work guaranteed with a 12-month workmanship guarantee. All materials are warranted by the manufacturer. Joe's Roofing uses only name brands like Mansfield, Timco, and Orrin Corning. 20 and 30 year roofs available in a variety of colors. They tear off the old, resheet, and clean up the mess. No hidden costs. All prizes are discussed up front with no surprises later. Call Joe Davis at 786 8914 today. That's Joe's Roofing and Guttering of Williamsburg, Kentucky. And be sure to tell him that you saw this ad. Restaurant on the Follett Pike in Jellicoe, Tennessee is a proud sponsor of Blue Devil Sports and they wish them a safe and winning season. Billy's would like to invite you to come in and try their new menu. Billy's Restaurant specializes in down-home cooking and everybody knows a restaurant's reputation rides upon the quality of coffee they serve. Nobody in town has better coffee than Billy's Restaurant. They use only King Brothers Gourmet Blend. And I bet you never heard of that before, but take my word for it. It's the best coffee in town. At Billy's, you can get breakfast any time of the day. They're open from 6 a.m. until 9.30 p.m., seven days a week. Billy's has fast and friendly service, and you can call ahead and place your order to go. Call 784-4362. That's Billy's Restaurant of Jellicoe, Tennessee. But Bridges is, uh, he's a transfer in here, as we said, and just now really getting the, getting the grasp on the Jellicoe system, uh, you looks might like, say. Looks like Jellicoe is trying to test the mobility of Oakville because they've not been able to run it up the middle on them. And the backfield now is a single setback, and that's Bridges behind uh, Bryant. And in motion this time goes Br Brown to the right side, and this time flags fly. Let's see what happens. Uh, Offsides against someone. It's probably going to be against Jellico, Jake. I believe not this time Just because the officials are talking to one of the uh, Oakdale players. There we go. Yeah. I think he's saying that you did that, son, and uh, it's going to cost you five, and that's exactly what's happened. So it's going to bring up a, a second and a short situation. I mean, I'm just surprised that we got one. <laughs> Definitely, me too. Yeah, that don't normally happen that way. No. Third and one, the ball's on the 20-yard line, squarely on the 20, really. I told Charlie King that I was going to talk to him after this ball game tonight. I don't believe he'll want to have any conversation. Well, Charlie, uh, hey, coming out of there with the ball is running hard with the ball. Is that Bryant? Well. It looked like Bryant. Getting up like no, Bryant, it's but it's Stanley. Stanley. Yes. Matt got the first down. Yes, sir. First down, Blue Devils. I believe that's only our first one, Jim. <laughs> oh, no, don't tell See, me that. Well, the 37-yard pass play was for a touchdown. Okay, I'll accept it, but, uh, boy, I'll tell you what. <laughs> we need <laughs> one. We need one. We need some more first down. <laughs> well, now, you, did, you tell you me when we had another first down. You can't win a ball game without getting first down. You tell me when we had another first down. You can't depend on them 38-yard 38, 38 <laughs> uh, <laughs> passes every time no, to get you score. Okay, this time the pitch back to Bridges, and he's duck soup in the backfield. 
nobody blocked, nobody even flagged anybody. And uh, as quickly as the ball was there, you uh, think even they a were there. You think a brush block would have helped? <laughs> uh, he didn't even look at that uh, on rushing. Let, uh, let's let's remind the folks, Jake, that uh, we have homecoming coming up in two weeks. We want you to get out and support the homecoming candidate of your choice. They're going to have bait sales, car washes, uh, a variety of things in the next two weeks help these girls because the money comes to this athletic program and uh, let's see mm, I thought, I, thought a, I saw a flag you got a flag in the middle and unfortunately where that flag is thrown normally is holding on the offense and that's what it is well I called uh, blocking below the uh, the waist but uh, it's still in that area where it's against the offensive team so talking with the captain uh, from Oakdale, that's uh, should be a ten yard number penalty, seventy-two. Jay. That's Matt Hidden, and uh, of course, stepping it off. Now. I don't know where he's going to stop, but uh, finally he does stop. Yes, Don. Yeah, the homecoming is the uh, night of the twentieth. That's correct. October twentieth. So I'll tell you what, I'm sure everybody that's listening to us who uh, has any association with the school at all, I'm sure they're planning on being there uh, because we're looking for a big crowd, and I feel like we're going to get one. So come out and be with all your friends. And this time uncorking another long one, it's Johnny Baird. And uh, intended there for Baird, uh, no flags, there's a lot of contact made there, of course, uh, when that ball goes in the air, it's a free ball, really, everybody has the opportunity to go to it I guess it, dep it depends on what color jersey you're wearing when you get That's a flag. That's true, I have an idea that they could possibly have flown, thrown the flag had the uh, numbers been the other way, <laughs> I just have a feeling that the Well, was. there was much more contact on that play than there was on the one that was called. That's true, absolutely. Okay, we're ready to go. We're looking at a third and about uh, 20 for the Blue Devils. And this time, Bryant just uh, stands up, fires it across the middle, and intended there for Stanley, I believe, as Marlowe came across and cleared out the area again with uh, uh, Stanley coming underneath. Jake, I don't want to sound like a chronic complainer, but if the folks get the idea that uh, the quality of officiating has been terrible at Jellicoe this year, it's because I feel like it has been. Oh, well, I don't think there's been anybody here that knows anything at all about football has not said exactly the same thing. High snap from center, but uh, Marlowe Miller, and he's, gonna, he's calling for a fair catch at about the 44. Jellico 44. Yes. This is a this is now, good field position for the Oakdale Eagles. I'll tell you, they're, Jake, they're, we need to dig in. There's only six minutes and 40 seconds left in the uh, first half, and we need to hold them here. Well, a stop here could really be a momentum builder, Don. I'll tell you, they uh, Jellico has played really, really well defensively in this first half. I see Dr. Walker out on the sideline again tonight. I'll tell you what, this guy. He beats dogs. He's you know? a sudden Jake. He is. And, I'll tell and you. JL, uh, he may not want me to tell this, but JL is in his 70s. Look at here, Don. A little screen pass. Uh, good pressure put on the quarterback, and another time it didn't even develop. Here we have Dr. Walker in your uh, picture, folks. Dr. Walker has freely given him his time for. I know of about the last 12, 15 years. Together. Don, I'll tell you what. I want to tell this little story while we've got the camera on him there. I was over in Thomas Walker, Virginia. I guess it's been maybe four years since that's where we're going to be going back this year. And it was one of the coldest nights I believe I have ever seen in my life. And this fella, Dr. Walker, was standing there. He had a little old... He, it, nobody knew that it was going to be uh, in that, the sub-teens, you know. Cold. And we got over there in the mountains, and it was absolutely freezing everybody to death and i really felt sorry for this fella I, he he didn't have enough clothes with him in other words but, but he stuck right he, there he yes stayed sir. right there boy i'll tell you he's and a good you, you know one of the unselfish things about dr walker of course his first objective is to administer to the needs of the jellico team but if a player from a visiting team oh, gets hurt yes. oh, he's yes. on the field just as quick to administer to that fallen player as he is to a jellico player Third and, oh, hit once, twice, and finally taken down there. Big Billy Perkins, I think, had a collision with him, first back, of all. Back close to the initial line of scrimmage. Uh, Going to bring up about fourth and ten. And, uh, Jake, it looks like we may have held. 
with 5.41 to go in the Well, there's no first question time. about it. I don't think they'll uh, go for another play here. They'll be punting the ball, so Jellicoe will be getting it back here, unless this is a fake, of course. Well, you got your quarterback uh, back to punt, and that is not who was punting before. And Miller, of course, is blocking for him, so you could have a fake. Uh, high snap oh, there. Oh, Jellicoe yeah. needs to get him, yes, sir. And, a, and a, he does try to punt it. Gets it off, and it's a short punt. Get away from the ball. Going to go only to about the 32-yard line. And as a matter of fact, the ball will not have traveled more than 10 yards. And, Jake, uh, there's enough time that Jellico could do something with that ball. A lot of time. Coming out of the game for the Blue Devils is Jerry Cummins, number 30. And into the game goes Bridges, along with number 61, Mark Johnson. So Jellico gets a starting offensive unit back in there with the exception of, of uh, Bridges. Bridges did not start, but has played extensively during the game. Uh, big fullback, as we said, transferred in here, and uh, Kuzo Bridges Owens. Is, Bridges is in Krager's place. He's, he's running hard, as Owens is giving him a little good workout tonight, and motion this time is standing, standing. coming to this side. And here comes Bridges with Brown blocking. Now, now. Get right. that leg drive going, Don. Show yeah. some strength. That picked up about seven or eight. Now, that's what happens when you get that lead block. Uh, Brown did a good job uh, uh, blocking for him. Brown's not only a good ball carrier, he's a good blocking back. Okay, we have 430 remaining in the first half. Jellico hey, leading to I still to want my, I still want my chalkboard up here. I don't know if the preacher's listening to me or not, but I want my chalkboard up here where we can diagram those plays. Bryant, hands under now. And gives to the Quick big hitter. hard charger. Yes, sir. -y. That's uh, Bridges again. Second, uh, second, first down. Starting to establish the running game now, Jake. Well, this is what we want to do. We've got a, a plenty of time, four minutes and 11 seconds, the clock running here in the first half. Angelico has enough time to, to march the ball down the field, really. Uh, Looking good right now. Good line blocking there and good running on Bridges' part. Bryant, this time a little razzle-dazzle goes to Brown, and he's got some running room. Yes, sir. Oh, one man reaches in and gets him by the, by the ankle. Jake, if he had stepped, if he'd have turned the ball, if he'd have turned inside, he had nothing but clear sailing. He strung the ball just a little too far to the sideline, but he should have turned that ball in just a little bit quicker because... The lead blocker was blocking to the outside, and if he'd have stepped inside of his blocker, he was gone. But instead, he strung the play out, and he got himself in a position where he was caught uh, in the same direction that the defensive player was being blocked in. Johnny Baird comes out to the right now, as uh, and Marlowe spread out to the left side. And this time, it's, it's the big man, and uh, gotten by the jersey there, as Brown just couldn't take the defensive man out. He was Brown's man. But Jerry just couldn't get him to the ground, and uh, he comes in and makes a play. As a matter of fact, had Brown made that block, been some good running room there by Bridges, but Bridges just didn't have a prayer. We need a tear away jersey, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's another thing you can write, write down, Don, on your request list. Well, I'm still you've on that you've chalkboard. Already, you've already requested about a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff since you've been well, up here in the we press box. Well, we wanted a wireless mic. Well, it don't, yeah, it don't hurt anything to request it, does it? Okay. We get excited devil. just like the rest of these fans do, you know. And this time, Brown going back into the middle and hit foo. No one. But Brown did hold on to the ball. Jake, that's a rough play to run against Oakdale the way we're blocking up the middle. Well, we've not got any blocking up the middle. That's, uh, that's, I'm sure that's exactly what you meant. So that brings up a fourth down for the Blue Devils. Well, I was being a little more diplomatic than that. But, uh, yes, we have weak blocking up the middle. And back in punt uh, formation goes Marlowe, and back to receive the ball, the deep man for Oakdale is uh, Stanley Smith, the quarterback. High snap from center, but he pulls it down and gets a pretty good punt off, going out of bounds on the 30-yard line. So Jellico needs to dig in here defensively. We got a minute and 52 seconds remaining in the in the first half. Jake, without sounding critical, do you think that uh, you've seen chickens beat their wings against a war fence about as hard as our offensive line's blocking them out? <laughs> well, they uh, they have done. I've seen them block. I've seen better blocking. That's for sure. And uh, but they're going to get better. Tell the folks about our sponsor, Jake. Well, we're going to talk about them in just a minute, that's for sure. But Oakdale now, they're ready to play ball. They Before I say it. something and get yeah. my contract canceled. Right, so we're ready to go. Smith hands under and gives to the second man through. That's uh, Doug Miller. 
and not much. Picks up a, maybe a yard as Jellico comes up and pops him good. It's Doug Miller so far. Jellico has been able to contain him as he is Jake, one of the better running was backs. Was that Miller or was that our unknown uh, running back that had that ball? No, that was Miller. That was Miller. So, so we have time out on the field now, and we will tell you about some of our uh, sponsors. Jellico Electric and Water System. John, uh, oh, Big William. John Williams. Leach out there, yes sir, Big William's what we knew him by out there on Cane Creek. You know John's an old Cane Creek boy. I, I grew up under John, John being did, somewhat did, older did than he, I. Did he grow up in the heart of downtown Cane Creek? He went, he went to Cane Creek Elementary School, John, yes sir. Back in the good old days. Back in the good old days. As a matter of fact, Big William, uh, this school was located rather close to where I was born and reared. Uh, me not being of a school age at the time, I'd go over and sneak in the back of the school and go in there and sit in Big John's lap. Back he, Big John was the biggest boy in our school uh, at sat, that time. And he and sat they, right close well, to what, 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 what happened so was, listen, he was so big that no, he wouldn't fit in any of the rest of the, the seats, uh, so he had to have a teacher's chair. Oh my and goodness. she had his chair, uh, her chair for John, right at the back of the room. And I'd go in there and sit in Big John's lap. Yes, sir. We'll talk more about the sponsors in just a minute. But anyway, this one is, ooh, almost complete as Brown really back playing the pass, but he got lost. And uh, the, the ball was just dropped by Oakdale. Uh, their man broke free, and he just dropped it. That's all. Uh, we didn't do a thing, but just let him drop it. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. -y. We, didn't, we didn't bother him. I believe that's Goldston that bought that one. <laughs> but we're thankful that he yes, did. Yes, sir. -y. Good job. That's Brings good. up about third and eight. <laughs> <laughs> we, oh. didn't, we didn't bother him any. Okay. Now, this time, the, the Miller, Miller has the ball, and he's, he's in the backfield. Oh. Yes, sir. -y. He's going to lose about three. Stanley back there, along with uh, number 21, Jason Bridges in the backfield and really doing a job on Miller. I guess he lost about five on that, Jay. That's right. Another timeout called for and given to Oakdale. Anyway, we're uh, talking about some of our sponsors. Tri-County Transmission. They're right there at the junction of Highway 92 West and uh, the interstate. And they're wanting to serve you. Oh, yeah. They, have a, they, they can take a transmission apart and do whatever needs to be done with it. Uh, they've got some specials, so you need to give them a call if you're having any kind of problem with your transmission. Go by and see Tri-County Transmission. Danny Somerset Oil here in Jellico, out here on 5th Street. That's Jim and Sons Towing also. They have towing service 24 hours a day. Uh, Damage-free towing, we would say, with uh, some of the best gas prices in this area anyway. Okay, and also uh, one of our sponsors, New Way Concrete. They're located in Corbin just south of Corbin on old 25W, about a quarter of a mile from the, the interstate junction down there at exit 25. So the New Way Concrete folks in Corbin, go by and tell them that we sent you down. We're ready to go. Fourth down, a minute 17, and Jellico goes in, tries to block one, and this time Johnny Baird's going to pick that ball up across the 50, hit at the 45, and drop there by a good tackle by number 11, and that would be Denny Helton. And he gets uh, Johnny Baird after about a 10-yard run back, but Johnny Baird really wanting to run that ball. Oh, he had to, he had running on his mind, Jake. He's up, we have it about to Oakdale 44 uh, with a minute and five left to go. We have time to uh, run three or four plays. Don, you know what? We can beat this team. I'll tell you, we can beat this team. We're as good as they are. We're, We're playing better. pretty We're good ball. And uh, Jellico just needs to get a few of their things together, and I believe they're going to. Uh, if you remember halftime last week, Jellico did not play a good first half against Harrison Fieldhouse at and, all. And came back and really beat them in the third quarter. They certainly did. Now, I don't know what Jack Hamlet's doing. Folks, I want you to look at him out there. I don't know what he's done. He doesn't know what he's done. Well, they called the clip. Somebody did. They called a clip against Jellico. Anyway, Jellico is marched back to the 40-yard line where it's uh, first and 10 from that point. As uh, I guess that's right. Anyway, the chains are back on the 40. So Brian, Bryant, hands under, has a single step back, and he's going to throw it. Got a man out, and ooh, this one's overthrown, and it's intercepted there by number seven, the quarterback, Stanley Smith, and defensively popping him. 
Across the way is, let me see if I can get him. Well, he won't break in the rear, right? Trigger coming across to make the, uh, make the, maybe a saving tackle. As the ball was intercepted about the 40-yard line by Stanley Smith from Oakdale. Jake and he brings it back across the, to the Jellico 40, inside the 40. With only 45 seconds to go, what may save us is the fact that Oakdale only has one timeout left. Well, they'll be throwing the ball, I'd say, here as they're standing back in the shotgun formation. That's Stanley Smith, good athlete. This time, good snap from center, and he's got a lot of time. 11 is open, and wide he, open. Oh, no, good defense there by Johnny Baird. Johnny goes over and plays the ball perfectly, Don. He bats it down. We don't dare touch him. Oh, no, uh, can't get close to him. Well, he can't even take a chance on knocking the ball loose, so he just knocks the ball down. Good defense. 38 seconds the way we're reading that clock. As you uh, as you know, if you're the last route, it's just a little bit difficult, but that's close anyway. What matters a couple of seconds? It's more than 30 and less than 40. <laughs> that's right. It's in the threes. Okay, we're ready to go again. Smith lining up in the shotgun formation. Has the ball cleanly now and back to pass. A little pressure put on and, ooh, ball tipped once, twice. And that looks like the old uh, tip drill. Tip, tip -roo. Yes, yes, it does. Sir. We almost had it, Jake. Almost Trigger come up, and finally he dives for the ball just at the last second, but unable to get the interception. Uh, was that Brown on the tip and uh, Stanley trying to pick it up? Probably so. Okay, another timeout on the field. Uh, Since I, I don't believe. have my chalkboard, I can't diagram that one for <laughs> no, you. We've got to get your chalkboard. <laughs> okay, Family Drugstore here in Jellicoe. They want to fill all your prescription needs. They have a full line of all types of uh, gifts. Uh, well, even have some houseware items in there. Have a big uh, sale Bet, going on right now. Supply. Yes, sir. They can fix you up. Little Dick Creek more. Okay, Cloverleaf Exxon and Muffler Shop out here on the uh, and the Cloverleaf. Ranford and Son. Oh yeah, old Ranford and Son. All the boys, Russ and the whole gang, Slim and Russ and Slim. Yeah, Russ and Slim, and they'll fix you up, buddy. They can make a. They can make a tailpipe for any model car that's on the road. They can bend that sucker right on the spot, uh, fix you up with a brand spanking new muffler, and their prices are very reasonable. And Granville, of course, he stands behind all the work, guarantees the work to be done uh, like it should be done, as a matter of fact. So uh, go by and see old Granville and all the crew out at the And if it's not on. done right, he'll see to it it is done That's right. exactly right. Back in shotgun formation, it's third down and has a lot of time this time. And uh -oh, oh, almost intercepted there as the ball was again knocked away by Johnny Baird. Johnny Baird looked like a center fielder on that one, Don. He said, "Come on, ball, get here." He get was the here. only man that oh, could he catch read, it. He read that pass perfectly. He broke in front of the receiver and uh, he just had a. Ho he was filled with expectation. Johnny Baird has had a whale of a game here in the first half. Has uh, really, really shown some good. Uh, some, I'll good instinct. I'll right? tell you what, good I'm instinct. impressed. I yes, really sir. am. He's showing good defensive instinct. Okay, we're ready to go. Quarterback now with hands under, and this time it's going to be a halfback pass, and a 50, 22 throws the ball, and Johnny Baird almost intercepts that one. But that was fourth down, just uh, just as well as the ball. We'll go over to Jellicoe on down with 19 seconds remaining in the first half. Jellicoe clinging uh, what are we, we going to do? We're going to fling one, and we're going to oh, run it. Oh, yeah, throw that out. sucker. Throw that sucker. Okay. Yeah, throw that dude. Maybe time for two passes. Okay. Yes, sir. We've got 19 <laughs> seconds, we think. Well, now, it depends. A uh, whole lot of things depend here on how many passes we can get off. It depends on whether or not that first one's intercepted or That's not. That's true. That's right. Okay, but anyway, Bryant, hands under. And they're going to run it. Yes, sir. Here comes Stanley. Has a wall of blocks oh, yes. One man to beat now. Nope. Coming across and after a good run by Matt Stanley, number 11 comes up and makes the tackle. That's Danny Helton. But uh, first down for the Blue Devils. That play only took nine seconds. We have 10. Jellico takes a timeout. Uh, Jake, we, we have, uh, look in the upper left-hand corner. You picture, you can see how much oh, time. Oh, yeah. Left. Boy, Pritchard's doing a job All on right. that thing down. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, Union Bank, they're your local hometown and operated bank. Uh, Pat, Skeeter, and old man Jake, the whole crew down there. Go by and tell them that you, well, tell them what you need. And, and they'll, they'll try talk to, to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you need a home loan, if you need an automobile, a school loan, whatever, whatever type of 
uh, banking needs that you have, I'm sure they're they're able to fulfill your needs. And right if now. you're not a customer of theirs, go, and, go by and open up an account tomorrow. They're yeah. open on Saturday. And tell them that we recommended uh, them to you, and they'll fix you right up. And if you're hungry, Billy's Restaurant here in town. Oh. Billy's has got, he's got some pinto beans, uh, T-bone steak, Don. And, and biscuits everything and in gravy. Between. Oh, biscuits and gravy. Ham, some of the best ham that you have ever witnessed. Son, it's I delicious. Think, I think sometimes you have to hold your mouth to keep your tongue from beating your brains out. <laughs> Billy's Restaurant, and this could be the last play of the first half. And Brown, Brown is the ball carrier and Four. getting Come on, time out. little yardage. Just a little. Two seconds, had, had enough time, do it. really. I was going to do it. Cuzo didn't want to, Jake. He but was waving him off the field. Okay, anyway, time runs out. So we've got a couple more sponsors to talk to you about. Just a scope, and then we're going to break for a pause for some uh, halftime activities. But W.H. Bowling, Coal Company, here in Jellicoe, he can fulfill all your coal needs. He can. He has, a, well, of course, he has steam coal, if you have a need for that. Has stoker, block, egg, any kind of domestic coal you might need. And he takes Call, the energy vouchers. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. -y. Call W.H. Bowling Coal Company. And for your all your furniture needs, Sterling Bear down here at American Home Furnishing here in Jellicoe, he has some of the best furniture at the most reasonable prices of anybody in the country, though. Oh, yes. Yep. You can't go anywhere and get better deals than American Home Furniture. Well, Ish is a good boy to deal with. He'll, he'll make sure that you get what you're paying for. Uh, so it's good value. They have Broy Hill, they have uh, your good Bassett, quality. Thomas Bassett. Bill, Lane, right. uh, whatever you can get anywhere else, you can get right here in Jellicoe from American Home Furniture. Absolutely. And, and right. at a price much better than you're going to get most exactly. anywhere else. So go by and see Jesse and Sterling down at American Home Furniture. Now, if your automobile needs a lube job, I can uh -huh. tell you where to get that. That pin lube on down in Williamsburg. You can, fact, you you can, can go, even sit and listen to the radio. Exactly right. You drive in there, and they'll put that little thing right over a little old hole down the ground, and one of them little dudes gets down there like a little old mole. And before you know it, you've done had your oil changed, and you've got your lube on that automobile, and you're gone there in 10 minutes. Sit there in the friendly and confines of your and automobile. You, you can listen to your favorite country and western Absolutely. singer on the radio, Absolutely. and before they sing more than two or three songs, you have had it. Uh, your oil change and the lube job. <laughs> that's right, Don. That's uh, we've gone over our uh, sponsors there, but we really do, folks. We're serious about this. We do really want you to go by and we appreciate these people because without them, we couldn't be here bringing this telecast to you. That's exactly right. There, there's a couple things, Jake, that I want to mention before we break for halftime. I want everybody in the Jellicoe area to support these homecoming uh, queen candidates. Uh, it matters not to us whether you uh, support the uh, senior, junior, sophomore, or freshman candidate as long as you give them uh, all the support you can because they're out here working for the school and they're working for this athletic program, and we need your help. As some of the folks may or may not know, uh, the football team, not only the football team, but the whole athletic program was a victim of the budgetary crisis that developed at the beginning of the school year. And as a result of that, we lost all the funding for our athletic program. Uh, we need uh, all of the help that we can get because uh, the first three games was played in a downpour, the attendance was low, the revenue uh, probably wasn't even enough to pay for the officials. Uh, we need we need you to come to the aid of this football team. They're going to be taking a couple long trips. They're going to Thomas Walker. They're going down to Nashville to play Tennessee Prep School. Folks, we need you to help this Jellico football team. That's exactly right, Don. We need their, what we need is their money. We need their support. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, we, we need you to make a donation, in other words. I, I realize that the events <laughs> of recent week, uh, the, this past week, especially what you saw on television uh, about the, 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 the uh, what would you say, the TV evangelist, we'd hate to get on here and solicit yeah, money. Well. But, folks, we need your financial That's support right. for this yeah. athletic program. Of course, of course, there's different ways that you can do that. They're having all types of programs now, uh, ways of uh, raising money and they're selling they're selling pom-poms as a matter of fact this cost me a dollar don hold, hold, the, the hold, cheerleaders oh, are yeah. selling these tonight for a dollar so yes. there's another way you can help i don't know how much profit it's they right. make off that it's i hope right they make job. about 90 percent i hope they make 90 and, uh, on a dollar. so uh, that cost me a dollar and uh, 
It's blue and white, and that's the best color going. And, <laughs> and that's uh, whether it's Jellico blue and white well, or some other school. I won't use that dude to bar. <laughs> at, at another school. <laughs> at another school. All right. Okay, so anyway, we want you to support them. So, Don, listen, we're going to have to get off and let the preacher do a few things downstairs. All right, and with and an 8 to, no, eight to 0 lead at halftime, uh, you sit back and watch our sponsors, and we'll be back in a few minutes for the second half right, kickoff. Sure. Kentucky by Tri-County Transmission and Muffler Repair at 92 West and I-75 in Williamsburg, Kentucky is now open for business with special hours for you on Thursday and Friday. Tin Lube stays open until 8 o'clock p.m. Changing the oil is the life of your automobile. Everybody knows how important that is. And now, thanks to the convenience of Tin Lube, it could never be easier. While you wait, it only takes 10 minutes of your time. Tin Lube will change the oil, the filter, grease your automobile, and check every fluid level. Plus, Tin Lube does a service inspection on your vehicle at no extra charge. Air filters are very important for the efficiency of your automobile. And when's the last time you changed that old air filter? Increase your gas mileage and save wear and tear on your engine. Bring it to Tin Lube. Tin Lube features Castrol oil products. However, if you prefer another brand, that's okay. The main thing is let Tin Lube help you take care of your automobile today. Tin Lube, the newest thing in the neighborhood at I-75 and 92 West at Tri-County and Transmission and Muffler Repair in Williamsburg, Kentucky. Open Monday through Saturday and hours are extended on Thursday and Friday until 8 o'clock p.m. state in America. I-75 is the location of the Cloverleaf Exxon and Muffler Shop under the leadership of Granville Moses. The Cloverleaf Exxon and Muffler Shop has served this community and its passing neighbors for many years. The Cloverleaf Exxon is a complete service station that handles a full line of Atlas tires and batteries and they are open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Now that service you can depend on. They offer the convenience of full service and self-service at the pumps. All major credit cards accepted. Exxon Gas is the superior gas in the industry. There's no doubt about it. When you fill up your tank with Exxon, you're putting your money's worth in your automobile. Exxon Oil Products have proven through the years to be a wise investment. Mechanics on duty at all times, and they do major and minor repairs because they have the equipment and the training to work on your automobile. The Cloverleaf Muffler Shop can replace your worn-out exhaust system with a brand new one. They offer factory welding and guarantee all material and workmanship. The Cloverleaf Exxon and Muffler Shop participated in the Exxon National Council Advisory Committee and have continually, year to year, won the highest awards for excellence Exxon offers. That's the Cloverleaf Exxon and Muffler Shop of Jellico, Tennessee. They say thanks for your business. in Williamsburg, Kentucky is your complete auto maintenance and repair center for this region. Why drive all over town looking for those so-called bargains when the only stop you need to make is at the Whitley Auto Parts in the Jackson Mall in Williamsburg, Kentucky, open Monday through Saturday. The Whitley Auto Parts has the largest selection of auto parts in this entire area. Go by and see Johnny and Teresa Ty. If they don't have the part you need in stock, they have overnight delivery, and they have a very large selection on rebuilt parts with a full 12-month warranty. The Whitley Auto Parts in the Jackson Mall in Williamsburg, Kentucky. The only pit stop you should ever have to make. of October the 20th and 22nd through 22nd. So, Don, you have some stats for us. Yes, I do, Jake. Uh, in the first half, Matt Stanley carried the ball three times for 21 yards. Alfred uh, Krager, one uh, for three yards. 
Derek Brown four attempts for three. Gary Cummings one minus five. Jason Bridges six for 23. Uh, we had a plus 44 yards rushing in the first half. Uh, Sammy Bryan attempted 14 passes. He had one picked off, uh, three completions for 40 yards uh, with one TD. Uh, total offense 84 yards in the first half, and Jellicoe leads eight to nothing. Okay, and we just you just saw the kickoff, and Jellicoe pinned the Oakdale Eagles at the 38-yard line. They'll have it first and ten from that point. Same backfield in there for the Eagles as the quarterback this time pitches it back to number 22, Miller, and he's smothered at the line. Lost about two on that, Jake. Uh, Jellicoe stayed home, defensed it well, and uh, we lose about one, two yards, so it's going to bring up about two and 11. Good defense coming up that time on the left side, Don. The Sammy Marlowe in there for a piece of that action uh, along with uh, number 74, I believe, Paul Morgan over there on that side. And they came up and made a good play, assisted in there by Matt Stanley playing his, coming up from his left linebacking position. We're ready to go. Quarterback hands under Stanley Smith and gives to the first man through, and he stopped at the line and driven back. See Matt Stanley getting up out of the pile, Jake. Good defensive play, and it looks like... Uh, uh, he only gained about two, uh, perhaps at most, going to bring up about uh, third and nine. Don, listen, I'm impressed with our defensive line. Our, our defensive line is actually whipping those offensive players of, of, from Oakdale. And this is something really I really love to see because we've been getting beat there in the trenches, they call it. I okay. Believe, I believe Owens had something to say. Oh, yeah. intercepted. Yes, sir. A back swing in a beautiful position to the ball was Brown that time, and he comes up with the interception. Jake, he just uh, played center field, uh, as they call it, uh, from his le left cornerback position. He broke well on the ball and was in perfect. He had the inside position and was in excellent position for the interception. They ran stride for stride he, uh, with the uh, offensive player, and as you said, just picked it off, and we're, right, we're back in business. The ball spotted on the 25-yard line. 10 minutes and 10 seconds remain here in the third quarter, and this is Jellicoe's initial uh, play from scrimmage in the second half. Motion this time coming this way. Cummings pitched back this time to Bridges. Needs a block. Did not get it, as Jellicoe did not have a single blocker out there on that play. Well, Jake, the only uh, Brown tried to lead, and he, he picked up the first defensive player, and then the rest of them just swarmed the left side, and it left Bridges out there by himself with uh, no place to go but put the helmet down and uh, take the punishment. Well, Jellicoe unable to get across the line, Don, really to get those linebackers, and the linebackers are the ones making plays on that. They're coming up with a head of steam and really popping our backs. About a two-yard loss on the play as Bryant this time splits uh, the backfield, has a single step back there in Bridges, Two wide out, and this time gives to Bridges, and here he breaks a cut. No, that's Stanley. Breaks a couple of tackles. Jay, that, that's a play that hasn't worked for Jellico all night. Just a little inside handoff to Stanley up the middle, uh, and our big boys uh, whip the middle of the Oakdale line. Picked up seven, eight yards on the play, really, and it's going to bring up a third and a short three for the Blue Devils. The ball's on the 32-yard line. Right. Need a first down here, and a full house backfield as Jellicoe now, oh yeah, here we come, that's uh, Cummins. Gary Cummins picking up the first down, number 30, running hard. Jake, for a little player, Cummings runs about as hard as anybody on this Jellicoe team. Uh, generally, when they put him in the ball game, he's in for just about one, two plays, and he gets you some yardage when he gets his hands on the ball most of the time. He's in there in place of Bridges right now. Of course, Bridges in place of Traeger. Uh, He's on the sideline at this juncture. He's back out now. Okay, ready to go. First and 10 for the Blue Devils. The ball on the 40, and this time Brown with a, kind of a halfback in around. One man to beat. Brown has got good speed. Let's see if he can beat him down to the 20. The 15, the 10, the 5, and in for the touchdown is Derek Brown. Derek Brown takes it the length, Don, goes 40, goes actually 59 yards. About 58, 59 yards, Jake. I was looking to see if there was a flag on the field, and I don't see any. That was an excellent run. He just took a handoff around left end. He got some 
good containment on the corners, and he just outran the uh, free safety into the end zone. Well, Don Brown has had, uh, up until, well, I'm not sure exactly now, but last year he was the fastest man on the team. Oh, looky here. Yes, sir, and it's completed on the pitch back to uh, <laughs> nobody but Johnny Baird. Beautiful. So Jellico again on the board. Uh, Don, look at that score. I love it. Oh, it's looking better all the time. But Jake. I was talking about Derek Brown, Don. Up until this year, Derek has been the quickest man or the fastest man, I'll say. The fastest man on this Jellico team. And uh, he really has not shown good speed uh, up until this juncture. He's having a little problem taking off and really getting ahead of steam built up. He's been but doing this a, time, tonight, he did drive right in. He's been doing a little better job blocking than he has carrying the ball, but he did an excellent job carrying the ball on that play. Well, he got around the corner there, and he has turned on the afterburners, and said, meow, my, boom. He showed them the speed that you were talking about. <laughs> That's exactly right. Okay, and this is a good low kick, taken on the 28-yard line by the Miller. Miller. And good coverage by the Blue Devils. The Blue Devils, they're fired up right now, Don. Oh, they're playing uh, with intensity, Jake. Uh, there was good uh, containment on the kickoff. Miller only got the ball back to about the 32-yard line. Uh, Jellicoe's defensive unit looks like they're going to pick up the spirit from that offensive uh, play, and uh, I'm expecting to see some good things right Well, I'll tell you what, Jellicoe has really played well defensively. As we said uh, earlier, they've been beating the offensive line from this Oakdale team, and I believe they're going to continue to do it. Smith hands under, gives to no fake to the first man through and keeps it, brings it up across the 35 to about the 37-yard line, where he's knocked down there by number 74, Don. Jake, it looks like he had an option play in mind, but he just couldn't find somebody to give the ball to, and he just had to tuck it under and uh, turn it upfield, and he picked up about four yards. Paul Morgan, the junior, comes up and knocks his feet under it from under him. And uh, and if I had my chalkboard, I could have diagrammed that for you. <laughs> right. Oh, no. <laughs> they say Big Billy Perkins jumps offside. He was dancing around, and uh, I don't believe it, but... <laughs> <laughs> Apparently they he say, did. They say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's going to bring up... Now, uh, I don't know how my chalkboard could help you on that play. No, I don't either. <laughs> but anyway, Big Bill comes out. He's going to get a little breather. He's played this entire game. Big boy. Well, now, he needs a lot of oxygen, so maybe they need to rest him for a couple <laughs> minutes over here on the sideline. That brings up a second and about a half yard for the first down. As you're looking across the way, you can see the chain set over there, the yard marker in the chain. About uh, 18 inches, really, for the first down. So Jellico really... Needs to buckle down here. Uh, uh, ball spotted on the 42-yard line. I left my slide over at home. I can't tell you to the <laughs> inch. Cuzo's got one. Uh-oh, we get it back uh -huh. right here. Oh, yes, yeah. sir. -y. Get it back. Would you say he started about one, two? Yarder, actually. Yeah, if they call each one of them. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice right now. But anyway, the ball spotted back at the original line of scrimmage before the other penalty anyway, that which would be about the 38-yard line. So we've moved down five, we've moved back five, and we're back where we were, and we're <laughs> running second we were. down over. Still running second down is right. Okay, Smith brings him up, hands under, and gives to number 42, and... Uh, at Brad Smith, and he picked up short yardage, not near enough for the first down. It's going to be about two yards short. Jellicoe's, I see Sean Ferris getting up out of, the, out of that pile. Uh, Don done a really good job. Sean's played his position well. And, uh, of course, Johnny Baird was in on the tackle. Yes, sir. Uh, they held Treasure, him to, Alfred Treasure in there. Held him to a gain of about two yards. It's going to bring up second and about a long two or a short three. Okay, need to hold here, need to hold here, and the give is up the middle, and I believe they have, Jake. All depends on the spot, Don. It's I believe be he's really about close. 18 inches short. And that's without the slide rule, Jake. <laughs> Don, I believe they got it, Jake. No, I believe they kept scooping it up enough to where well, they took that first down at. They tried, but he is six inches short. Okay, I'm hoping you're right. But anyway, we're waiting for that now. The change to be brought in from the far side, and you're going to be right there on this measurement. And uh, while they're doing that, tell them about our sponsors. Oh, yeah. Well, 
we've got a bunch of, well, we've got a, I'm looking at a list here. We have 11 that I can see. Don, let's see, it's 18 inches. Don, judge it again. I told you they were short, Judge. Absolutely. Don had his bifocals in, uh, right in focus <laughs> that time. Yes, sir. <laughs> but anyway, it's, uh, it's short. Angelico is held, but of course it's uh, third down coming up. Fourth and, down, Jake. Well, they haven't changed it across the way They're yet. They're wrong. It's fourth down. Now nah, we'll take there fourth we down. All right, now they will be. Look like they're dropping back in punt formation. That's number seven, Stanley Smith, and he'll be kicking from his about his 32-yard line. And Johnny Baird, number five, drops back in single safety for uh, the Blue Devils. And uh, Jellico lining up on the line like they might be going to try for the block, and they break through there and almost get it, but he gets it off, and Johnny Baird looks and decides to get away from the ball very wisely. John, John is, uh, he's used some extremely good judgment tonight, Don. Yes, he has, Jake. Uh, that was not a, a very high punt. It was more of a low driving punt. Uh, Baird could not get in position to get under it. He had to let the ball hit and bounce. It took an Oakdale bounce, and he used good judgment in just getting out of the way and letting the ball roll dead about the 25-yard line. 5-16 remaining in the third quarter. Jellicoe holding uh, to a 16-0 lead here at this juncture and has the ball. And Bryant has only a single step back behind him. That's Bridges. And in motion this time, Brown to the left side. Back to Bridges. Got a blocker out, but it's, he can't find him. And he's still up. Here he's got a wall build on this side. Got a head of steam build up and finally hit. But flags fly in the vicinity of where it would, would be an illegal block, Doc. Well, I believe, I believe every official on the field threw at least one flag. <laughs> There's four flags on the field, that's for sure. They ran out of them. I was expecting to see their caps start going. <laughs> uh, I don't know what they call. Illegal block. Could and a clip. Well, that's another illegal block. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I, believe, I believe they'll take the 15-yard clip. Now, I'm not sure, but uh, I believe the blocking below the waist is a 10-yarder. I'm, I'm, I think you're right, Don. So I'm sure they will take the 15 yarder, that being the larger of the two. Which, which you, you would think so anyway. But anyway, the ball will be spotted way back for the Blue Devils. <laughs> well, they can't go inside the 10 now uh, because it was on the 22. So they're going to spot the ball on the 10 yard line, looks like, Don. So, uh, Jake, that's an erroneous spot. It should be about the, about the 11 or 12. Okay, they're saying, uh, let's see, the box, ball spotted on uh, the, the 10 yard line, and they've got to come up to the 35. Jake, that's a bad spot because we had the ball on the 25. It can't go back down the 12. Half the distance to the goal well, line. Well, these guys didn't bring their slide rule either, apparently. So Coos might have even pulled his slide rule out on these two. I think he needs to check the spot. Well, Johnny Baird coming up to, uh, he's, he's questioning the the, uh, the spot. The spot, I think. No, let's see, what is he doing? No, he lost something. <laughs> okay, lost his mouthpiece. Okay, Johnny Baird, number five, losing it and finds it. So, okay. So anyway, we're ready to go as Jellico has the ball first and 25 on the 10 yard line. And uh, this time to give to Brown, to Brown, and he needs another blocker, but not out there, but picked up 10 yards. Brings the ball out to the 20 yard line. Brown on the little inside move, though. Now a little quick uh, hitter in, uh, up the middle, Jake, and some good hard running by Brown. He gets about 10 uh, of those 15 penalty yards back, and we're about five short of the original line of scrimmage. Right, cause, so we're going to call it a second and 15 from the 20 yard line as Brown, Bryant, the quarterback, the senior quarterback, brings him up to the line, single step back in for Jellico as they have two wide out, have their back split. And this time, give to coming and they still have, yes, they blew him down. I didn't know if they was going to or not, but he just lost his footing, Don. Looks like he slipped and touched his knee there, Jake, and that killed the play. He was trying to get outside, and if he could have got outside, I believe he had enough room to come up the near side and pick up some yardage. Coming to show some good speed, uh, really, coming out of that backfield, birdie down there, uh, really looking good. He's deceptively fast. He's small. Uh, I don't know if that makes him look faster because he's small, but he looks uh, he looks quick when he uh, turns that corner. He certainly does. Okay, we have just over three minutes to play in the third quarter.
quarter as Bryant again has his back split. Single step back. And this time to give up the middle in short yardage as the ball is going to be down on about the 22-yard line. And it'll bring up a fourth down situation for the Blue Devils. Unable to pick up the first down. And it's going to be about fourth and 13, Don. Judge Matt Sanda got up limping that time. They tried the uh, inside handoff uh, coming off a right uh, tackle. Um, that play has worked at times, but I believe they're going to have to get outside if they're really going to move the ball on Oakdale. Matt Sanda stays into the game, as you said, limping as a blocker. And this time, Marlow gets off a good one. Yes, sir. It's going to be fielded on the on the fifth 48 yard line there by Miller, and he's down almost immediately. Very short run back. Jake, he just uh, he didn't really have anywhere to go. He went straight up field. Uh, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. He just got the best that he could. Uh, looked like he fielded the ball about the 48, returned it for about six yards, and uh, they're going to have it on about the Jellicoe 47. Jellicoe, good pursuit on that, Don. Good coverage on, the, on that punt. Excellent. Good high punt by, by uh, Marlowe. Excellent uh, punt coverage, Jake. Okay, we're ready to go. As uh, Stanley Smith, the quarterback, gives to Doug Miller, and he tries to find something off the right side. Nothing there. Looks like he's going to gain about three, maybe four on that uh, uh, pickup, Jake. It looked like they just tried a little off-tackle right, and Jellico uh, came up and met him defensively and played the ball well. Marlowe and Morgan over there taking care of the situation on that side of the line, stopping him for about a two-yard two yard, uh, gain, really, as Matt Stanley came up from his linebacking position to put the, the clinching tackle on him. So we're looking at a second and eight for Oakdale. The ball's on the 30, no, the 44-yard line. And up the middle goes a big running back running hard, number 44. He's the unknown running back. And flags fly, two flags, Don. Now, he may be unknown to, I mean, he's only unknown to us. They may know who he is. Now, well, he looks like he picked up about five for a good hard, uh, hard-earned five. But where the flags were, it looks like it's going to be against Oakdale, Jake. We have two. One was thrown by the referee and one thrown by the head linesman. So it's more than likely going to be against Oakdale. Well, the, uh, the preliminary signal, Don, did indicate that it was illegal procedure against Oakdale. So there, here they go back five yards. And, and there's the official uh, and signal. We'll, and we'll take it. Oh, yes. Needed that. As a matter of fact, that marches the ball back down to the 40, back out wheel straight to the 48-yard line. Still second down, but it's second and 11 now. And this time fake up the middle by Smith, and he throws one, got a man open, and just unable to hold the ball as the ball was thrown, intended for number 80, 34, I believe, Eddie Nelson. Uh, Nelson's a little slot back, Jake. Uh, uh, he was surrounded by a sea of blue. I don't, I don't know if he wanted that ball or not, because if if he had uh, hauled that one in, he had about three ready. They already had bead on him. They certainly did. <laughs> Good play defensively by the Blue Devils, and we're ready to go. Third down and 11, as Oakdale having a little problem getting their backfield set, but they're ready now. As, as Smith hands under and he back to pass. Got some good hot pursuit coming to him from, from Marlow. And oh, beautiful defensive play there by old Tracy Creekmore. Tracy, we've not called his name as many times tonight as we normally have done, but he'll always be around the ball. Jake Tracy came from nowhere. Uh, he showed remarkable speed for a linebacker in covering that pass. And... Uh, looks like we have a flag again. Yes, but uh, they wiped it off, I believe. Don said no flag, so we're ready to go. So <laughs> Maybe a snuff can just fell out of his <laughs> Maybe back so. pocket. Took the flag with it. <laughs> but it's fourth down, Don. 54 seconds remains in the third quarter. And uh, as Stanley Smith drops back in punt, punt formation and deep for the Blue Devils is number five, Johnny Baird. We should get decent field position out of this punt. Good high punt. Baird fire catches. He does so beautifully. Yes, sir. Comes up and uh, catches the ball on the 19. Yeah, just inside the 20. So Jellico will have it first and 10 from that point. And Jellico now shuffling in some new players. I see uh, Mark Johnson going back in. 
So, Don, we have a, maybe a couple of seconds where you can tell them about a couple of our sponsors there. But I don't know. They're coming up on the line now. These Blue Devils getting serious about this game. We're going to have change of quarter we, anyway we, we 47 even, seconds. We didn't even have time to tell them about 10 minute moves. No, we? we're ready to go, though. we fine. Gives to the back there. A little cross truck action there. And that's Brant. No, it's Stanley. Had one man to beat there, and he would have had some big yards, Don. Jake Stanley was running hard. He looks like he's picked up about eight. A uh, little inside handoff on a cross buck action uh, off to the right side. And if he could have got by this one corner, uh, it would have been a race for the goal line. Second down uh, for the Blue Devils. About a yard to go for the first down. Just in, uh, just inside the 30-yard line. And Jellico needs to pick this first down up as the quarter almost uh, is just about over, really. And Bryant gives this time to Cummins and flag flies in the backfield. I have no idea what that would be, but it would indicate you would think some motion by Jellico, and it is. Jake Cummins just didn't have any running room. Uh, question is whether or not Oakdale takes the play or takes the penalty. Uh, there was no gain on the play. I believe they'll, since they only lack about a yard, Don, I feel like they'll take that penalty for sure. They need to move them back, uh, I believe, would be their idea about this situation. Well, while we No, have he it. refused it. He refused it. I, I don't see the logic of this. But anyway, uh, it's about a third. <laughs> it's going to bring up a third and about a yard situation, really. Well, Jake, they've been playing uh, Jellico pretty tough tonight. Uh, you know, two or three times they've been in our backfield uh, Probably a little bit deeper than our fullback. Okay, that's the end of the third quarter, Don. What about our sponsors, buddy? Well, while we're changing ends to field, let's tell the folks about the 10-minute lube in Williamsburg for all your lubrication needs. Take your automobile down to uh, 10 lube in Williamsburg and tell them that we sent you. Stop by and see uh, Sterling Bear, Jesse, John Leach, uh, friendly folks at American Home Furnishings for, for all of your uh, furniture needs, for your uh, coal needs, whether it be block, stoker, or what have you. Uh, contact WH Bowling at uh, WH Bowling Coal Company. If you get hungry, Jake, go by uh, Billy's Restaurant home of the famous Billy Burger and some of the best home cooking that you will find anywhere in Jellicoe. Stop by and see the friendly folks down at uh, Union Bank, uh, your hometown bank. Uh, um, We're ready to go, Don. I believe yeah, looks like they have the ball mark, Jake. We'll talk about these folks a little bit later. Okay. Okay, first uh, no, it's a third, third and short for the Blue Devils. Here comes Brown, and he's got a lot of running room. Up to the 20, 35 to 40, to 44, and finally pushed out of bounds there by number 34, and we don't have him down here, do we? Yes, it's Eddie Nelson pushes him out of bounds. First down, Blue Devils on the 46-yard line. Jake, uh, uh, looked like about a pickup of 20, 27 yards. He got a he got a couple blocks, and then he just did the rest of it with speed, guts, determination, and plain hard running. That was an excellent run by Derek Brown. The ball spotted just across the 45-yard line. A minute or 11 minutes and 47 seconds remaining in this game, and uh, another flag in the backfield as Matt Stanley has the ball, picks up another first down. But I believe they're going to tag Jellico again for illegal procedure. Jake, they're running well up the middle on Oakdale now. Matt Stanley looked around as he got the hand off, and he said, Derek, I'm not going to be outdone to you. But the officials are ruining us back there, Don. This guy has called, uh, well, three, almost three straight uh, illegal procedure penalties against Jellicoe there. And we have a, a senior group in that backfield. I, it's hard for me to see all that motion. I'm, I'm trying to pick it up, but apparently... Apparently we're doing it, but because he's calling it, huh? Well, he's calling it. Uh, we can't see it. <laughs> but Matt, Matt, but we have a better view of it than he does. <laughs> we have two views. We have one on the field. We have one through the eyes of the camera at strategic locations. And Matt still did some hard running. He certainly did. Good hard run. Okay, this time to give up the middle and losing the ball is Jellico, but the recovering the fumble is Bryant as there was a little mix-up on the, on the handoff. Jake, I don't know what you say other than uh, Bryant just did not get the ball into Stanley where he wanted to, and uh, that could be disastrous, brother. 
were really gone other than the few five-yard penalties and, and a couple of, well, a couple of major penalties. Skeletor has really played an outstanding game as far as fumbles and interceptions in this type of thing. So we don't want anything to start right here. Second down for the Blue Devils and a long way to go. And Cummins. here comes Cummins, and he has really hit another flag. Jake, that flag is thrown by the headlines, but I don't know who it would be on, but uh, Cummins had holding against Jellico. Uh, well, I, would, I would think with second down, they will probably decline that penalty and uh, bring that, up third and 19. Well, that being a major penalty, Don, I would say that they'll not, buddy. I believe they'll take that major penalty. If that had been a five-yarder, I would say yes. But that's going to well, be a 15-yard penalty. That's going to pull Jellicoe all the way back to about the 20-yard line, really. Keep in mind, Jellicoe has a strong passing game, Jake. I know, but they've got a mile to go for the first down if you decline. Well, I'll tell you. I, 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 I just told you, Joey, that I don't know football, <laughs> you see. No, you know football. I just happen to have a walkie-talkie up here on the uh -oh. same frequency. Uh-oh, you're, <laughs> you're in communications. <laughs> ah, see. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Jellicoe, third down. And back to pass this front, and it's complete to, to uh, yes, to Johnny Baird, but it's way short of the first down. Now, that's why I've been, uh, that's what I've been telling you all night, Jake. On those little passes out into the flat, Bryant needs to zip the ball. Unfortunately, he was just a tad off and uh, Baird had to stretch out for the ball. Otherwise, if he could have kept his feet, he would have picked up some more yards. Yes, Don, I understand that, but the logic says that you play also for field position, so another 15 yards to that uh, would have really made a lot of... Oh, good play down there defensively for the Blue Devils as big Tracy Creekmore goes down and puts a sure lick on the ball carrier. Jake, that was, a, that was a line drive punt, and Tracy, the ball hit Miller and bounces into the air. Miller picks it up and starts to run, and he says, uh-oh, here's Tracy Creekmore, <laughs> and he doesn't get one step. He certainly doesn't. The number uh, 56, uh, the senior, Tracy Creekmore, all over the field, a good little ball player. Did a good job there. We're ready to go from the shotgun is Smith. Back to throw it, and he fakes one way and throws another, and it's completed. Uh-oh, this could be trouble, but Johnny Baird there to recover, and uh-oh, there's going to be a face mask called on, on uh, back on. Jake, it looks like we were kind of playing a zone defense that time, a uh, little loose zone, and uh, he just split the seams of the zone with the pass, uh, kind of caught our defensive coverage in, uh, in a shifting pattern, and they were off to the races. Good pickup down to near the 30, and then another 15 yards is going to be tacked on to that, Don, for the face mask. I would think inadvertent face mask, but uh, anyway, it's a face mask penalty. <laughs> it's a major penalty. They're marking off 15, 15 yards. Of them, so uh, I don't know if we have an inadvertent and a flagrant in high school, but uh, that was certainly... Uh, flagrant penalty. Yes, it certainly was. Anyway, back to down to the 15-yard line. First down for the Eagles and uh, some pass, the pass is completed over there to, I can't see that number, number 12, whatever. Jake, we're playing just a little bit loose on pass coverage. Uh, Jellicoe's going to have to, excuse me, they're going to have to tighten up a little bit on their pass defense. Uh, the previous pass was completed because they were playing a little loose and they, they were dropping back a little bit on this one. And if they don't tighten up, uh, Oakdale's going to push it in here. Well, Don, that's a first down, buddy, inside the 10-yard line. Looks like the spot is going to be around uh, somewhere near the 7-yard line. So we're going to call it first and goal from the 7 for the Oakdale Eagles. They've not been on the boards up until this juncture. Jellico has done an outstanding job defensively. From the shotgun is Smith. Back to pass, and he throws it in wide open, and it's good for the touchdown. Yes, sir. Looks like Cummings fell down on uh, defensive uh, coverage, and that left the Oakdale receiver. He was open by a good five yards. So Oakdale on the board with 8.59 uh, remaining in the game. Dino Oak giving the signal down here across the way from to his defensive unit. 
Jake, I don't know if we just loosened up on our pass coverage then or if Oakdale has figured out how to exploit our defense. Well, I don't know either. But anyway, Oakdale asking for and getting a timeout. While we have timeout, uh, tell the folks about some of our sponsors. Okay, the Jellicoe Electric and Water System, as we said, uh, John Leach down there in and uh, he's the head man of that thing and runs a tight ship, does a real good job, and we're real proud of John and all the folks there at uh, Delacour Electric and Water uh, System sponsoring uh, Blue Devil Sports. The Tri-County Transmission uh, outfit down in Williamsburg, they do outstanding transmission repair work. Do any type repair that you need, adjusting, uh, testing and checking your, your filters, changing your filters, whatever you need as far as transmission work's done. Tri-County Transmission in Williamsburg, they're the people that can do the job. Danny Somerset Oil here in Jellicoe. Sometimes at, known as Cracker. That's right, better known as Cracker. Uh, and also Jim and Tons Sewing, uh, Jim and Sons Towing Service, uh, give you 100% uh, trouble-free towing. Anywhere you wanna go, they've got some some of the finest looking wreckers around here and do a good job. We're ready to go now as the attempt for point after up. They're going for two and back in the shotgun is Smith. Throws one out, it's completed. Can they get him before he gets there? No, they no, do not. He gets in a little pass out into the left flat, Jake. Uh, that's what I was worried about on whether or not they have figured our defense out. Well, anyway, they're on the board to score 16 to 8, but now we've got a few more responses to tell you about. New Way Concrete in Corbin, Kentucky. They're just about a quarter of a mile from the exit 25 on Interstate 75. Up there on your left, uh, fix you up on anything in the concrete line that you might be needing. Also, the family drugstore here in Jellicoe, ready to take care of all your prescription needs. They uh, have a of course, a registered pharmacist on the job at all times, Little Dick Creekmore and all the friendly folks down at Family Drugs. They can uh, have gifts, uh, all types of, uh, of pharmaceuticals, uh, what you might need, all types of aids and so on like that. So we're that's, ready to go. That's a uh, health aid. Health <laughs> aid, yes. Little Dick yes. wore the blue and white <laughs> once upon a time. Oh, yes. Eggs. I was out here when he got his arm broke, Don. That tells you how many years I've been around here watching this stuff. Uh, Brown, uh, Brown. If he can turn the Derek corner. Derek Brown's got one man to beat. Good run back by Derek Brown. Bumps out of bounds there by number 76 at D. Lynn Hill. But a beautiful run back by Derek Brown. Oh, that was a beautiful run back, Jake. He he turned the corner and got a full head of steam, and all he had was number 76 to beat. Uh, that was a lot to beat because that was between him and the goal line, but if he could have got past him, he had clear sailing to the end zone. But nevertheless, he brings the ball out to the 45-yard line where Jellicoe has it first and 10. Don, if you'll notice, Johnny Clifton, when things are sm going smoothly and everything is Hey, okay. Hey, look here, Alfred Tigger. Yes, sir. Hey, picking up the first down inside the 45, the Oakdale 45. Don't let me finish this. Go ahead. You, Go ahead. But when things are, are all roses, you can look around here and you see Professor Clifton, Johnny yes. Clifton, back here behind us. You know, here in the press box, right. cooling it. But when things get rather tense. You look out on the field, and old Johnny's right down there with the team. I'll tell now, you what, this we, fella is into this. If we get a shot, he's the one with the white hat on. The good guy. <laughs> yeah, that's Gregor right. Gregor picked up about nine. Okay, and Gregor again, they said, we're going to reward you on that good run, son, and let you do it again. And he does pick up uh, some, a sizable gain there, taking the ball inside the 40 down to the 40 to the 38 yard line. Just a little quick hitter. He picks up about seven or eight more, Jake. Uh, Crager has strung together his two best runs of the night back to back right when we needed it. Okay, it's first down for the Blue Devil and Crager comes to the sideline now, replaced by Bridges, the big fullback in there now, behind the only setback actually behind Bryant. Would you, right. would you call Clifton the pacing professor? <laughs> that would be a good word for him. As a matter of fact, uh, this time Bridges is made at the pass and ridden to the ground by about three or four red and white clad uh, Oak, Oakdale Eagles. I uh, think we went to the well about one time too <laughs> often with that play, and Bridges loses about well, two. Well, there was no blocking on the play, Don. Really, it was just it was just naked, so the ball's come marched back Jake, now. while they've come up to the ball, uh, 
we need to tell the folks about the little uh, or the elementary team. I'll talk some more about that in a minute. Okay, this time they end around. No, it's the halfback around, uh, actually, as that's the play that we scored on just a minute ago. It's Brown again getting getting the ball, not getting near the result, but picked up about uh, four or five yards on the play. Jake, he didn't get real good blocking. Uh, what he got, he got mostly with speed, uh, but uh, he was giving it just about all he had. We needed just a little bit of blocking on this left side. Uh, brings up about third and eight. Uh, a rather odd formation that Jellicoe has been lining up in tonight. And this here goes Stanley, and he's got some running room close to the first down, and I believe he's got it. Jake, that odd formation that Jellicoe uh, lines up in gives us a chance to do a little trap blocking, and uh, with an inside handoff, uh, Stanley runs to the opening. Uh, he just ran over where the center blocked, and I picked up the first down. He gained about nine or ten yards on that carry. As you're looking at this formation, you see a single setback only behind Bryant, and that being Bridges. And this time, Bridges gets the ball, and he finds a hole. Still on his feet, and it's going to be a touchdown. Five, two, one, and into the, into the end zone goes Bridges. Donnie wouldn't be denied. No, sir. Hit. That's his first touchdown of the year. Uh, what happened is they lined up, Jake, in this odd formation. They they fake to the up back. He, ta he takes out the defensive uh, player and left a hole for Bridges to go through, and he just squirts through and says, I'm not going to be denied. This is my first touchdown of the season, boy. Well, Bridges has got big, churny legs, Don. Looks like a natural fullback, and he got leg tackled, uh, actually, and he just wouldn't go down, and this time it's good. Intended for Matt Stanley, and he catches him in the end zone. Matt goes through this little thing. <laughs> I love it. Is and that, the, listen, this crowd loves it. Is that, the, watch, this game. is that the watch who see? <laughs> <laughs> that's the Stanley Chapel. <laughs> oh, that's what that is. All right. <laughs> yes, sir. I love it. This is the first time Jellico, I think, has really enjoyed a game this year. But this tells you if you play hard and play well, you can get this type of result. These teams are, to me, very equally matched here tonight, Don, and, I, and I'm impressed with Jellico said, I'm going to be stronger than you. I'm going to take control of this game, and that's well, what they're doing. This is what we've been telling the folks, is you have a fine team here in Jellico. Come out and support them. We have a good crowd out here tonight. Not a sensational crowd, but we do have a good crowd out here tonight, and they are enjoying themselves. They're standing all over the stands. They are uh, letting the team know that they're behind them. Uh, well, they've well, apparently, Don Jellico had a penalty, a, a major penalty, that's being assessed now. I get Don, I'd say that was for that little shuffle down down there in the end zone. Well, uh, he didn't have the ball. Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm just guessing. I didn't see it, but I'm just guessing. Anyway, Jellico kicking well, for the still, 25. It was still worth it. Oh, yeah. Pour it on. Good long kick, low, and it's fielded there by number 22, Doug Miller. And he tries to get around the corner and does so. I see a flag, and that's going to be a clip. So anyway, the play is going to be nullified and brought back. We're going to have a clip about midfield, Jake. The old boy that did the clip, and it, I can't see his number. It's a 60 or 68. Once he did the clip, and he just turned around and sat down and said, here I am. Actually, the official called a hold on him, Don. So it's done? the same results anyway. Uh, still a 15-yarder. Well, he just sat down and said, I'm not going anywhere else. No, they say it's a 10-yarder on this one. So uh, they're marching the ball back to the 40-yard line, and it'll be first and 10 there for Oakdale. We have just under six minutes to play in this game. Jellico 24, Oakdale 8. You think uh, he was trying to give that hold back when he just sat down and said, <laughs> I quit? <laughs> uh, maybe so, maybe so. But it's first down for Oakdale. The ball spotted, as we said, on the 40-yard line. First and 10 from that juncture. And from the shotgun, it's Stanley Smith. Back to pass and get some pressure put on him. And, ooh, throwing across the middle. It's completed. Need a fumble, and there it is. Picking up the ball is Johnny Bear. Up to the 45, the 50. Got one man to beat. Down to the 40, down to the 30. And knocked out of bounds on the 20-yard line is Johnny Baird. What a run back. Oh, that was beautiful, Jake. Uh, and just about the time you said we need a fumble, you got it, and Baird was in the right place at the right time, and he just picks the ball up, and uh, with a full head of steam, he comes up the near sideline, and he he had one man to beat, and he had the angle on him and pushed him out of bounds. 
the uh, Oakdale team is conferring with the officials across the way, and uh, uh, they're uh, they're conferring with. I believe the they're coach. I believe the they're questioning whether or not he can advance the fumble. That's exactly what they're uh, questioning, and uh, and I really don't know the ruling on it, Don. I believe if he gets the ball in the air, you can. I think if it hits the ground, you can't. Now I'm not sure on that, but I believe in high school ball. In order to advance the fumble, you have to get it in the air. Okay, so That's we're the college rule, I know. Well, we're waiting now for the official ruling as the officials themselves are conferring with with each other, and it is going to be brought back. So apparently, you cannot. Uh, they say you cannot advance a fumble, but uh, Dino Oates and Jerry Owens down here on this side are definitely not getting taking any of that stuff. They are telling Charlie King exactly what they think about the situation. And uh, but Charlie's not going to go in and raise any cane about this. He's he's uh, yes he, he is. He still doesn't know what's going on. We're we're waiting to see. The officials themselves are not uh, not completely well, in the clear. Now the referee's it. coming over to talk to Coach Owens. Well, we're just waiting to see. As you're looking into the uh, discussion between Coach Owens and the officials, but Jerry is not being he's not pleased with the call. No, sir. He's but it doesn't make any difference. There, speaking, these officials are. <laughs> he's speaking his heart right now, son. I'll tell you that. Pull that slide rule on him, there, Coo. Show him exactly where he's wrong. I'd know. like to have the mic right out in the middle of that discussion <laughs> right now, wouldn't you? That's interesting. It, it is. It looks like the official is pouring his heart out right now. Well, both officials are being talked to and uh, Dino, <laughs> by the coaches. He knows using sign language, and Guzo's using some other kind of language. <laughs> Well, we really have no idea. We're having to wait and see. Dino's going with him. <laughs> I believe Dino, uh, Dino would like to take him somewhere, I'll tell you that right now. But I'm not sure that they've convinced anybody of anything yet. They're just going to do what they think is going to be the right thing, and uh, I don't even know if they know what that's going to be. I believe they're just throwing their cap in the air and praying. <laughs> they just don't play it over. <laughs> <laughs> they say, let's now, go. Oh, now now. here comes Elk Bell coach. Yes, sir. Equal time. But the officials getting ready to take the ball back down here, and here comes the Elk Bell coach. Well, they have a ball marker out here about the 30 yard line. And uh, coach, go out here and see what this coach has got on his heart, buddy. Coach <laughs> Owens, I think you need to get back in the middle of that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who's. <laughs> Get with him, Coos. I don't know if the, if, if the team that calls the timeout gets the referee's ear or not. Well, let's see now. Don, looks like they have made this spot, and they have spotted the ball on the 40-yard line, and they call it an incompleted pass, apparently, and Jellico does not even have possession of the ball. Jake, I don't see how that can happen. Uh... So, well, there's a timeout on the field because Dino's right out there amongst his defensive players. Well, Oakdale called the timeout, but I don't believe they get more than 30 minutes on the timeout. Well, it was definitely a completed pass down here, Don. There was no question about the pass being completed. There's no question about the fumble. There's no question about the fact that Jellico recovered the fumble, but Oakdale winds up with the ball. And how they get the ball, where they have the ball, is beyond me. That's not even where... No, uh, they were Miller, back like on the 30-yard line. That's not even where Miller was tackled. Okay, Miller has the ball, and he throws it out of desperation, really, as Jellicoe's big Billy Perkins was in there in his face, along with uh, Sean Ferris and also uh, Sammy Marlowe. Jake, I wish we could tell the people just what went on out there, but I can't for the life of me. I cannot figure out why the ball is on the 40-yard uh, line. Well, I don't know why they spotted it there, Don, but I, what I'm... What I will say the officials are contending is the fact that he did not have control of the ball at any time, so it was an incomplete pass. Now, of course, the ball should have been marked back at the original line of scrimmage, but they lost their line of scrimmage because here's another one oh, yeah. by Johnny Mears. Got one man to beat, but he cuts back into the middle now, into the teeth of the defense, and he's thrown down inside the 30. Now, son, that time, of course, Johnny Baird played uh, right cornerback extremely well. Uh, there's no question about that one. Uh, he got the ball, returns it to the 30-yard line. I see no penalty flag. We have the ball. So all this other discussion was moved, Jay. That's right, but we just like to keep justice, Don. You know what I'm saying. 24 to 8, the score with the Blue Devils 
with the lead and with the ball. Bryant hands under, gives to the single setback, and that being Bridges, and he's hit in the backfield, and a flag flies, and that could be an illegal tackle, Don, looks to me like. No, holding against Jellico. I don't believe that. We were not close enough to anybody that time to hold. <laughs> Jake, there wasn't but one man, and that was Bridges, and he had both hands on the ball. How can he hold? How can he hold? All thing he was holding was the ball. <laughs> I'd say that's a flagrant foul against the officials right there, because that was, <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, their, their, their men was in our backfield before we got the ball done. Hey, you oh, can't get a hold of that. We must, have, well, we must have went across the line and held the safety. You can't, well, they only marked off eight yards. <laughs> it was a little hole. It was yeah, a little it, hole. It was one of them, uh, uh -oh <laughs> <laughs> it them dead gun holes. It was a little hole. Yeah, okay. We're ready to go. Jellico has a full house backfield this time. With Cummings up. No, Brown on the back of the eye. And this time, nothing for the Blue Devils as the big, white shirted Oakdale Eagles pile on pretty good that time as. Marlow has the ball, or not Marlow, but Stanley had the had the ball and picked up very little. Nothing doing for Stanley on that one. Uh, he was tackled by about a half a dozen. O Oakdale's been doing a pretty good job of piling on. They've been getting away with it all night. Arthur Smith back into the game for the Blue Devils replaces Mark Johnson. So we're ready to go. We're Brian. getting ready for a big play. Here. Oh yes, Brian hands under. And this time it's to Brown again, and here it is, it's open. Yes, sir. One man to beat. One man he cuts back and then follows the, the pursuit, catches him from the back. But it's a first down, Don Moses. Yes, beautiful, uh, beautiful run, Jake. Uh, he, we were backed up in the hole. They did a little uh, end around. And at that time, you had the offensive end blocking out. Brown cuts inside the block. And he had clear sailing, a beautiful run. Got into the secondary, and they had to run him down from behind. Okay, again, uh, wing T in the backfield with a full house back there. And this time a give to Bridges running hard. And he's knocked down after about a four-yard gain. But Jellico running hard. Their, uh, their backs are all cranked up now. And they smell that end zone again, Don. Yes, sir. He, he tasted, Jake. Uh, that was just... Uh, a three yards and a cloud of dust play. Uh, here we come. You stop us. Uh, good blocking on the left side, and Bridges did some hard running. That's Sean Ferris over there, and Paul Morgan. They're the down linemen on that side. Uh, Creekmore, uh, and uh, uh, let's see, Paul Morgan on the other side. Give to Stanley. Uh, Jake Jellico has been having good success with that inside uh, handoff tonight. Looks like that Stanley picked up about three more yards on that play. It's going to bring up about third and four. Two minutes and 40 seconds to play in this game. Jellico leading 24-8 and down deep in the territory of the Eagles. As a matter of fact, we're calling this spot on about the 12-yard line. Needing a first down here, and this time again, caught in the backfield is Brown, and he finally wiggles his way back to near the original line of scrimmage, but nothing there. Jake, it looks like he's going to lose about two yards. Uh, well, I can't tell on the spot, but it looks like he lost about two. Uh, he did not get set uh, for the handoff, and Jellicoe's been trying to run inside to neutralize the charge of Oakdale, and that time they just could not get it set up. Well, it's fourth down for the Blue Devils. Fourth and we're going to call it fourth and six. The ball spotted now about the 15-yard line. And this time, Stanley running hard with the ball. And he's going to be close. He's got it, Don. I believe he's got that I, first down. I believe he has too, Jake. That was another little quick uh, hitter inside handoff uh, running off the right. Just off the right shoulder of Big Perkins at the center. Oh, yeah. He got the first down by two yards, Don. We're down about the seven-yard line, so it's going to be first and goal from the seven for the Blue Devils. And he smells pay dirt. Clock running a minute 29, and uh, full house backfield again in there as, as Bryant brings him up. Needs this to, uh-oh, uh, flag before the snap, so it's a dead ball foul. Let's see. Possible we've got delay of game or encroachment. Offsides against Jellico. It's hard to go up and just automatically line up offsides. I can't see this. Charlie King's been calling some things tonight that I haven't been seeing out there. 
Oh, I'll tell you, I didn't see any motion. Of course, there was not a motion penalty. It was uh, offside. Apparently, what he's calling is lining up in the neutral zone. Well, apparently, yeah, it has to be something of that I nature. I mean, we don't have the angle, so I can't tell from the uh, from the camera angle, but that's the only thing I can figure that he would be calling. Okay, it's first and goal for the Blue Devils from the 11 now. Krager, 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 in for the touchdown. Out for Krager, number 45. Comes off last tackle, Don. Just pulls his way in. Yes, sir, Jake. In the, in the first uh, quarter, Jellico could not run that inside play, and uh, all of their scores have been uh, just up the gut. They are whipping the interior of Oakdale's line on this. Don, let me make a little comment. Before the, the, uh, before the arrival of Bridges to run in the, in the fullback position, along with Cummings, here, Bryant. Bryant's just going to try to put it in there himself. Maybe short, Jake. But uh, as I was going to comment, Don, Alfred Krager, up until the arrival of Bridges and the, uh, as of late, Jerry Cummings coming there to, to spell him in the backfield, he ran every play at fullback. And since he's got this help coming up now, the support group of Cummings and Bridges coming in there, giving each player uh, a chance to be be more fresh when they go into the game and you can see the difference out there on the game in, oh, the, in the game oh yes he gets a little bit of rest jake uh you take a lot of pounding at that fullback position uh you run play after play after play into the line it starts to take its toll on you if you can let a player rest a few plays and then put him in he's going to be much more effective than if he's being hammered on on every play so we have 57 seconds remaining in this game, and uh, everybody in this crowd, well, just about everybody on the bleachers here on their feet as the ball is kicked down to the 22-yard line, taken there by Miller. Miller. And around the side, up the sideline he comes, but nothing much as we see the flags again on the field. Let's see who it's against. Uh, the umpire threw that flag, Jake. Uh, I can't tell, and it was right on the tackle. Uh oh, I see, Don. The, the signal is face mask against the Blue Devils. And Jellico asking for a timeout. That was Arnold Arnold Hawkins now, not Arnold Bennett that threw that flag. Well, I was that gum. I didn't know there's another Arnold around here. <laughs> but anyway, Jellico asking for and receiving a timeout as Dino Oak uh, calls his, uh, his defensive unit to the sideline here. No, he's, he's trying to get a new unit in, Don. Uh, Don, that's what he's doing. Well, I'm going to take look at this number one out yeah, there. Yeah, he's taking a big one out on the field with him. Oh, Mark Stanley. I'll tell you what, Mark weighs about, looks like about 37 pounds or he so. He says, Matt, I'm going to show you how it's done, brother. <laughs> yeah, that's the little brother of Matt. And he is a, they say he'll pop you, buddy. He's just about as big as a minute. Well, now he's going to. Hey, the coach. The boys along the sideline here are, are really, I'll tell you what, they love it, Don. Oh, yes. Hey, we, we <laughs> have uh, little Kevin Brown going in, 24. Hey, here we go, the coach. <laughs> oh, they've got it. They're after him with the water bucket. He outran them, believe it. Uh, <laughs> we, we, well, we have a little Brown and a little Stanley out there. They're going to show Big Brother how oh, uh, well, it's done. <laughs> Well, we'd like to call you these these fellas. If we can, we'll identify some for you. I see Mark Silcox in there, number 90, at defensive end. And uh, high snap from center, and good pursuit put on that quarterback, and the ball falls to the ground. Uh, Stuart Rigney also into the game for the Blue Devils. Lance Beatty in there. Uh, let's see, Don. Let me see if I can pick up a couple more. Uh, the number 36, that would be Keith Bruce in there. Number 28, Virgil Creekmore into the game. Now number 68, Aaron Morgan goes into the game. And coming out is number 58, looks like T.J. Davenport. And these new boys are showing them back yeah, up. We can do it too. Good defense there by number 88. That's Stuart Rigney coming up, coming up and knocking the pass down. Let's see if we can identify a couple more of these new players into the game for you now. Keith Bruce, we call his name. Number 90. Number 75 into the game. That's Dennis, Denny Bridges. They're saying we don't get much playing time, Coach, and we're going to show you we deserve they're, it. They're living it up. There's 38 picks left in this game, and this and uh, Folks, these fans are living it up, too. Good oh, pursuit. Look the yes, sir. Coach. Look at here. Yes, he got him a pop. Uh -huh. Absolutely, and a pass falls incomplete. 
as number 68, Aaron Morgan, comes up and really pops that quarterback. He was assisted there by Virgil Creekmore, and also in on the play was Mark Stillcock. And he turns around and he says, Coach, I thought you brought your second string in. <laughs> Lance Beatty up on the line for the Blue Devils also. And I, if I have failed to call anybody's number that's out there now, I'm apologizing. I want you to know that I'm not doing it in, intentionally. Let's see. I believe Bobby Bowling, number 60, into the game on the far side over there. Jake, is it? Oh, well. This time, a little too eager, this uh, new group. So, he'll toss the Blue Devils. But that's fourth, it's fourth down, Don. Fourth down, and of hey, course. Jake, our, our beat just went after him that time on the right side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy, I tell you what, there's, I don't know if we've got a guy out there right now going 125 or 30 pounds. I'll tell you, that's the. Uh, about as light a crew as I have ever seen assembled. But this is going to be against the Oak Hill, Don, going the opposite way. Apparently, they were pulled off offside. We had a false start, and by gosh, <laughs> they had their motors running, and they could. were ready to go. <laughs> yeah, Mark Stanley, he's playing the safety position, and he drops back off the ball about uh, 15 yards. He says, I'm going to get you if you catch that pass. Okay, and here you go, and the ball is snapped over the head and just goes back and falls on it. <laughs> now, you would think that a uh, fresh group of, re <laughs> of recruits would have done something then, but by guys, those were, they knew to stay off of him when he went down. They knew exactly. Okay, I see uh, Kevin Brown there, number 24, was back on that action, along with number 18, Lance Beatty, and only 10 clicks, we think, left in the game. We're not sure it could be either... 10 seconds or 18 seconds it's hard to say but you're looking at the this is the subs out there and uh, the, the jake, kids along a, the sideline here don just having a oh, ball they're having a ball jake we have an elementary team this year that the folks may not know about and we would like for them to come out and uh, support the elementary team because that is the feeder program for this absolutely we've got a young man that's from the and we have not, college we have not had that for years here at jellico so we're uh very thankful to have that team and uh we want you to support the eighth the elementary school. Morgan Lay in there on that uh, on the last action, but he comes to the sideline now. And uh, of course, we have a young man from Cumberland College who's coaching the elementary school. They have a game this coming Thursday night. Jake, I that believe. backfield average is about 80 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> no question about it. That's something. I'll tell you, I love it. But they're uh, giving it all they have. They uh, picked up about two yards. Well, I, I can't tell who had the ball. Across the way, it's gained about uh, two yards on the play. And look at that little number one there, Mark Stanley. <laughs> They know what it feels like to really come out and play well against a, a good team. This is the most fun I've seen at a, a home game in a long time. Well, I can Jake. truthfully say I've enjoyed this game more than any game I've seen in ever because I don't like close games. I like blowout with us in the driver's seat. You know? And 30 to 8 is a, That's a, a blow good score. And little Stanley didn't get the ball, but he's got to try to hit somebody just so he can make contact. These guys, I'll tell you what. The, the Blue Devils team as a whole, Godon, I, I thought just played outstanding. Sammy Marlowe, he played real well tonight. Did some good kicking, good punting for the Blue Devils. Played his defensive end position very well. Paul Morgan, very strong uh, offensively and defensively in there tonight. Derek and Brown had his best game of the absolutely. season without Mark, question. Yes, sir. Mark Johnson on the line did a good job tonight. Of course, the big the big boy, Billy Perkins, he played he played one of his better games, I thought. And, of course, Sean Ferris, he's about as steady a player as I believe the Blue Devils have got, both offensively and defensively. Sean is around the ball all the time. Tracy Creekmore, of course, he is just Mr. Defense as far as I'm concerned. He'll be near the ball on every play. And Johnny Baird had an outstanding game well, both offensively was, and defensively. He was the next guy's name I was going to call. Johnny just showed a lot of savvy out there tonight. I'm real impressed with Johnny's athletic ability. He showed a lot of poise in some situations that a younger player like he, a sophomore, uh, really uh, it's, it's split-second judgments that you have to make, and he made some of the right judgments tonight. Of course, Sam Bryant played well at quarterback, threw some, uh, finally got on track after a very poor start in the first half, but uh, got the ball to the receivers, and Derek Brown did some of the better running tonight of his entire career here at Jellico. He's kind of been a little bit off, as I said, up, up until this game. Old Derek might have found himself tonight. 
an effort trigger on uh, getting some brakes uh, to uh, kind of get him a breather on the sideline as he was spelled in there by Bridges come in and ran well. Got to pick up a first down or touchdown and did some hard running. Jake, we had a score by Crager. Crager. We had a score by Brown. Right. We had a score by Bridges. And we had a score by Brayer. Brayer, that's exactly right. So we had a lot of scoring tonight, but it was uh, broken up amongst four different players. And I'm just glad that we don't have to pick an offensive and defensive player right. game. Well, because Matt, they all play their hearts Matt out. Matt Stanley, he's always around the ball, too. He and uh, Tracy Creekmore, they impress me a, a, more every time I see them play. But uh, a real good game. The Blue Devils, as we said, coming out on top here. 30 to 8, and this is the kind of game I like. I don't like a squeaker. I like a blowout with the Blue Devils in command. Don, where's your sponsors? Where are they at? Where Jake, are they? Where are they? Jake, we had fun tonight, and we want uh, all you folks to come out homecoming night and have fun, just as much fun as we did. We kind of got excited here. We've lost our list of sponsors. Uh, well, but this was, by golly, this was a, a good ball game. Well, Don, I'll tell you what. I've got them right here. I think we can go with this. But anyway, next this coming Friday night now, folks, the Jellico Blue Devils will be trailing, be traveling to Thomas Walker, Virginia, and it's not far over there. You go to Middlesboro, and well, you go to Cumberland Gap, and you turn right there. I forget the That's name of the, the route. Of Lee County. But and I don't have any idea. I only know I've been there every time they've ever played, and I'll be there as long as they play, I guess. But anyway, I'll be there, and I'd like to see you there because it's not all that far over. Maybe 70 miles, something of that nature. But anyway, it would be a, a good short trip. 70. Short 70 miles. Get to see Middlesbrough Mountain or either go down the valley there. It's a nice drive. But anyway, we need to tell you one more time about our sponsor, Jellicoe Electric System here in Jellicoe. We appreciate all these folks because without their help, of course, we keep telling you this every time, without their help, this telecast would be absolutely impossible. Preacher is out here on a purpose. He's building a TV station, Don. Yes, sir. That costs money for everything that he's doing and I don't see how he's doing it but he's doing it and of course it costs money to put this to put this on the these air here on. these broadcasts and of course without this money coming from these sponsors preacher would be mean, able to even do though it. we give our time it still costs money for equipment absolutely. and the other uh, uh, amenities that it that are required absolutely but well of course we have mentioned these to you before but we do want you to go by and and pay them a visit tell them that you heard about it here on channel three here in Jellicoe Jellicoe Electric System, Tri-County Transmission in Williamsburg, Old Cracker Blankenship, Danny Somerset, Jim and Son Towing here in Jellicoe. Go up and visit them. New Way Concrete, the concrete people of, in this area does an outstanding job in Corbin, Kentucky. The family drug store here in Jellicoe, Little Dick Creek Moore, and all the crew down there. Go by and see them. Cloverleaf Exxon, Old Granford Moses and Shrim and and uh, Lewis. Lewis and the whole gang and Union Bank, your hometown home operated uh, friendly bank here in Jellico. All your banking needs, any type of loans, it's available. It'll be available down there, I would think. It's very competitive rates on their all their interest rates and so on like that. Billy's Restaurant here in Jellico. Uh, Billy's has got the uh, complete food line for you. If you want a hamburger, he's got it. If you want a T-bone steak, he's got pinto beans, home breakfast. Food. Mm, cornbread. Absolutely yeah. good cornbread. W.H. Bowling for all your coal needs. He's got your domestic coal, any type coal you need. Block, egg, steam coal, stoker coal, whatever. Call W.H. Bowling. They're one of our fine sponsors. American Home Furnishings here in Jellicoe. O.S. Baird's, S. and Jesse, down here on Main Street. You know where they are. Go by and see them. Jesse and Jesse. Old Jesse. And Tin Lube. Tin Lube is in, in Williamsburg. There at the junction again. All these little places we're talking about seem to be right around the junction, the 92 and, and 25W, somewhere around there. And go by and see them. Get a 10-minute oil change, lube job. They'll fix you right on the spot. You sit in your car, and uh, in 10 them, minutes you're ready to leave. Tell them we sent you. Tell them we sent you. That's exactly right. And before we sign off, let's remind the people that two weeks from tonight is homecoming. Right. The There are representatives of each of the four classes in Jellicoe that will be having various fundraising activities during the next during the next two weeks uh, leading up to uh, uh, homecoming that's the way they crown the queen is the girl that raises the most money 
So you help these kids all you can. Did you call their names, Don? Angela Grubbs, representing the senior class. Dawn Malico represents the junior class. Sheila Blankenship, the sophomore class. And, of course, Christy Souders represents the freshman class. Help these kids and help all these classes because the athletic program at Jellicoe needs your help this year. No question about it. But, again, go by and see our sponsors. And, again, the Blue Devils, my compliments to them for a game well played 38 to 8 the and score my compliments to the coaching staff Absolutely. because they had this team ready dino and gary did an outstanding job getting this team ready and they lived up to well, our expectations well, here, come here come here dino come in here for a second here we got dino oaks uh, come out here dino well, coach sure coach media <laughs> well dog. coach dino oaks step right up here Dino, uh, the boys played well tonight. I'll tell you, Jackie, we are pleased with our effort. After our Harrison Cowboys game, we was a little down on our kids. We put our kids through three hard days of practice. I mean, hitting. Well, it showed uh, the poise and the confidence these boys came out here. They didn't really get cranked up, uh, seemingly, to start the game off just like they wanted to. Bryant come out, and uh, I think he was like one for uh, one for ten or eleven to start the game, but he finally got uncranked and got the ball to the boys that could kick it, yeah. and they did. Well, we've been preaching, Jake, to play four quarters of football, and, and it's hard to get across to them. We we tell them and tell them, then we put it in their hands. You know, we 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 try to stress, you know, to play hard for four quarters. Well, you know, it's hard really to pick out an all-star in tonight's game because it was such a a team effort that I was impressed with the defensive play of so many people coming. Oh, you start naming them and you, you'd really mess up. So we'll not do that. But they, it was was a defensive. I, I told on. I thought our our defense just controlled the line of scrimmage right in the right in the trenches, and that's where I thought we won the game. Well, let, let's just call it a team effort. That's Jack. exactly right. Yeah, everybody on that football team contributing a little bit tonight. That's true. And it, we were really pleased to see you, you fellas put those little dudes in there at the end of the game. They, Looked like a bunch of little piss ants going out there <laughs> pecking. But, you know, they was hitting people. They was hitting people. That's right. Yeah, they, we, we was wanting to get our kids, our young kids in, because they've not got to play much. So we was pleased to get them in there. Boy, I'll tell you what, Dino. Congratulations yeah. on another big win. Have you got anything you need to say? Uh, just uh, we're pleased with our effort, and we're looking forward to going to Thomas Locker. Well, we're, we've are we been telling all the folks how to get there, and uh, that we'll be there. I'll be there. And... Uh, We'll be looking forward to a big game there, and I believe we can get them. I do, too. I'll see you up there, Jake. Right there. John. Okay, folks, so uh, after telling you again the score here from Jellico, uh, Jellico's Bill Humphrey Stadium in Horton Morton Field, uh, Don, have we got anything else we well, need to say? Well, we want to thank uh, Coach Oaks for coming by and talking yes, to us just a minute. Enough. We want him to extend our congratulations to head coach Owens because they did a magnificent job getting this team ready, and I enjoyed the ball game tonight, uh, Jake. And if you weren't out here, folks, you missed a fine that's ball right. game. I love a blowout. Yes, Especially I when do. we're on the upper end. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, folks, so we're going to be getting out of here, so we're going to tell them uh, again. Yeah. Well, we're going to tell them old Wayne Marlow how much we appreciate all the things that he does here. Drives all the way over here from Pine Knot uh, every, well, every day, actually, and, of course, makes an uh, effort to be here every ball game and has done so. Brings his crew with him out here. This gentleman out here working the camera just a real good boy and does just an outstanding job for the preacher. We appreciate him. One of the Brown boys that was doing some uh, work over here, Jeff, did uh, some of the camera work for us. Very so we appreciate brother. him, right? So we're going to say uh, from Bill uh, Humphrey Stadium in Horton Morton Field uh, for the, the entire staff of Blue Devil Sports, Channel 3 here in Jellico, Wayne Marler down in the truck, Don Moses, and myself, Jake Bennett. We're going to say good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you.